Boom, boom, and we're live. We're recording Guns and Geese Camp Nine podcast, and we're sticking with the new tradition of podcasting before the camp. Yeah, yeah, because we're just old, smoke, fucking it's broken. Because it's be- and it's better. I think the content's better. I think the content's better too. Because we're angrier too. We're not a horn. <laughs> <laughs> and we can smoke and drink and get as ridiculous as we want, which right. is. What we fully intend on doing tonight. Because tomorrow's a prep day, kind of a down day, if you will. Yeah. Uh, Jenny just texted me. She goes, I forgot to get blackout curtains for the office. I just ordered them. That's it. She's uh, dead to me. Overnighted them, and they'll be here tomorrow morning. <laughs> so. It doesn't matter because Lily is going to be standing on my chest no later than 06 tomorrow morning. Wanting what? To go to, out and fucking play and be a Malinois. No. <laughs> wanting to go fucking Maligator shit. Oh, fuck, dude. So, what are we drinking? Dude, I got reprimanded for buying Tito's. By who? Angie. Sure, Why? Sure. She wanted me to get Kettle One. Is that I mean, snobby? Is that snobby vodka? Kettle One's good vodka. Don't get me wrong. Like, I won't talk shit about Kettle One, but like, Tito's is made in fucking Texas. So it's American. It's a fucking American. Where's Kettle One made? Oh, some fucking faggot shit. <laughs> <laughs> and we're there. <laughs> some chest feeding fucking bullshit country. <laughs> yeah, we can go off on chest feeding again. Um, fuck, dude. Where do we start? <sighs> Bro, I don't know, man. So we got another full, another sold out class this weekend. Bro, I mean, it's fucking rad. Yep. The full classes are just... The energy is high. It's a high energy, dude. And fucking how many of them are repeat? That was going to be my next question. Al- is I, yeah, I noticed we do have a lot of. It's repeat. like eight I, or nine. I, think, I was going to say eight. I think eight. <sighs> yeah. Our repeat. Alumni. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alumni, bro. And bro, we, right. we regularly, I would say almost every class, that's probably about the average number. Yeah, we always have at least a half dozen alumni come back. Yeah. Which is crazy. Like. I mean, like they say they get more. Back two, three, yeah. yeah, yeah. They get more out of every experience. Well, bro, I mean, fuck. We talk about it literally every podcast, and I'm going to continue to talk about every podcast because it's literally what's going to save America. But it's fucking becoming a savage, taking care of yourself, becoming Ready, fit, readiness, being fucking, becoming yeah. capable. All the same shit we always talk about, and that's 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 what our camps become. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool you to know? see people well, show that's what up, it, and that's what it's about. It's cool to see people show up and it literally changes the trajectory of their lives and they get addicted to that and they want to come back and share it with other people and like keep it going for themselves too. You know, I, that, I think like, it's like when I read books, bro, every time I read a book and I read the book again, it's a different book. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so when they come here and they have the first, like they make the first friends that they met us. Right. Mm-hmm. And the next time is a different game, you know. Right. I mean, even though it's basically the same course, we are the same people, right? Right. But the experience, what they take home, is a different experience. A different yeah, they experience something different yeah. every single time. Well, bro, the academy, like we all have our home academies, and the academy becomes an accountability tool for people. For sure. And you can't show up here day in and day out and not live the lifestyle because. Your teammates are going to see it, right? You're going to get called on it. You're going to get called on it. And if you, if you want to if you want to progress in jiu-jitsu, it forces you to take care of yourself and other aspects of life off the mat. And what's crazy is, I mean, I fucking, I've brought up Steven a couple times. He's actually doing the podcast next week to tell his story about how this place dramatically changed his life. And in, I think, three months, he's down 40 pounds and he's living the life. Dude, I saw him a month. We saw him a month ago. Yeah. I was like, bro, you look like a different fucking human, it's dude. Like, yeah. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Holy shit. And, and, and But the, you know, it's easy. We talked about this at dinner. I wanted all the chocolate cake. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> bro. <laughs> no, I here's mac and cheese, chocolate cake, all of it. Here's the crazy thing. What's he doing? Like fucking down 30 or 40 pounds in three months. That people be like, oh, God, that's unheard of. It's not unheard of. If you train jiu-jitsu every day, you eat meat and fruit and you drink water. Yeah. Yeah. Go that, figure. That, that's oh, what happens, wait, right? You mean I got to eat healthy and exercise? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, a lot of people, because all jiu-jitsu academies and 
like we always say, some jujitsu is better than no jujitsu, but all jujitsu academies aren't created equal either. No. Right. Yeah. And you may not have a group of people that can become accountability partners. Guns and geese is an accountability tool for people that may not have access to that locally. 100 fucking percent, you know? bro. Well, you know, and, and again, it goes back to his one. It's, it's the community accountability. You know, you're going to be tried and tested by your teammates and you know again like going back to dinner tonight i told you guys i'm fucking feeling fat tonight i want fucking this mac and cheese with fucking bacon and steak and whatever and i want fucking chocolate cake but you know what i didn't fucking order any of that shit i ate fucking steak and rice because we got a six-pack picture to take on saturday well right? of course so there's the vanity part of it too but like you know like yeah i fucking love pizza motherfuckers i love fucking ice cream dude everybody everybody does. does but i don't fucking eat it all the time and that's why i'm not a fat piece of shit and you know what's interesting is like people talk about the vanity aspect of it or to want to look good that's you're being vain cool there's but nothing like, wrong with that bro you should like that, the way you look naked in as the i mirror. say the two Seriously. indicators the two indicators of your health is how you look and how you feel yes if you're not happy with either one of those, you're you're fucking yourself. Some, yes. But also, Some, but also right. sometimes you're feeling down, bro. It happens to me all the time, bro. I'm feeling down, feeling like whatever, yeah, yeah. you know, just feeling. And then I go, you know, take a shit, and then before <laughs> before I sit on a, before I sit on the toilet, I look in the mirror and I'm like. Fuck yeah, motherfucker! <laughs> You're looking bro, good, man. I, I, said, bro, I said all the time. <laughs> and then I feel, and then I remember. It makes me remember who I am. Yeah, you know you're I mean? fucking sad. And then bro. I'm like, fuck, and my attitude shifts right there. Yeah, 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 like, yeah right yeah. before you take a shit. You know? <laughs> bro, <laughs> so. When you look yourself in the mirror, you're literally gonna think one of two things: I'm proud of how I look, or I'm a fat, disgusting piece of shit, yeah. and I need to tighten my fucking shock group up. That's it, dude. Yeah. And if you're in a place where you're proud of how you look, bro, it's empowering. Fuck and yeah. like people want to fucking say whatever they want. And I guarantee you all those people that would ever talk shit on that, it's because they're not proud of how they look. For sure. Because I've been on both sides of the fence plenty of times. Like there's an ebb and flow to fitness. Mm -hmm. And like Jenny always gets down on me when I'm like, dude, I, I look like a fucking fat piece of shit right now. She's like, you look better oh, than 99% me of men. That does, 40. That's not enough. And I said, dude, I'm not chasing. Well, 99 percent of people i'm, I'm chasing, chasing zero zero point zero 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 one yeah, yeah but you know who I, <laughs> you, you know who that person is that i'm chasing well it's yourself is yourself. me it's your standard yeah. of course because dude i've been an absolute fucking super athlete at times in my life mm -hmm. where like i look good i perform good i'm fast i can fucking ruck all day i can fight yeah. like and once you're in that, what you would consider like elite shape and you drop out of that. Yeah. Then you know you're mind it. fucked. But yeah. you know it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. dude, you're, you you walk up fucking three flights of stairs at, a, at an airport or something and you're like, what the hell is wrong? <laughs> dude, I'm a weak <laughs> pussy right now, right? <laughs> yeah. Bro, there's some people that have never felt what it's like to be in really good shape. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then when you feel the, when you have been in fucking like no bullshit, like pro athlete, Olympian elite shape and you start to hit your forties and you're not there anymore. But that's like, and don't get me wrong. Like we're so savage motherfuckers. That's the best feeling in the world when you are there at your forties and you're feeling like you're in the best shape of your life. For sure. You know what I mean? But like, and you always being like me, I always be an athlete since I'm a teenager. Right. And bro, look, nowadays I look in the mirror. I'm like, dude, I always had six pack this and that. And I feel fucking proud of myself, you know, Fuck I mean? yeah. for being active, not just for looking good, for having no, abs, but being but actually physically being fit, being capable. At this age and have the same mindset yeah. that, bro, I don't want to let it down, you know, I want to keep yeah. up and improve every, at 50, I want to look better than I. Well, it's the same thing, you know, it's like half the time I look at myself in the mirror, I'm like, fuck, dude, you got to fucking tighten up your shot group. <laughs> and if most people looked at me, they're like, dude, you're fucking 40, almost 45, you're better looking, you know, you're in better shape than fucking 20 year old kids. Dude, back to uh, so I think you were going somewhere with the. Um, I haven't even people. started smoking yet. We're already we're already <laughs> getting lost on topics. People people have never there, there's people out there that have never felt that. Yes, you know, no, bro, and it's like you almost feel sorry for people. Oh, it's a yeah, shame. It's, it's like, a shame dude, what the human body's capable of, and they've never even touched it. Because you know how like when you're in the the best shape that you can be in, walking 
is is literally <laughs> it's walking bro it's but, but fucking it, walking walking it shouldn't be tiring walking is almost on par with like laying in bed right it's absolutely effortless mm-hmm. and you could walk indefinitely like hey we got to walk 50 miles okay let's go and for some people like the thought of walking one mile is arduous as fuck dude yeah and so it's like i tell the younger guys on the team all the time to take the time to get in absolutely elite shape at least one time in your life just like you said a fuck a professional athlete level shape because what that does is it now it sets that benchmark Mm -hmm. and you know who you are when you're in the best the best version of yourself Mm -hmm. and it's an important metric to have because a lot of people I, i literally had a guy i was talking about being fit the or like what we're talking about right now, something, yeah. something along these lines on Instagram. And a guy wrote me a DM and it said, bro, like it's not fair for you to compare yourself to other people because you are an absolute elite athlete. Most people aren't there. And I was like, bro, there's nothing elite about me at all. Nothing except for fucking hard fucking work. But even like, it's just the mindset, bro, bro, there's you know? the, you line up the entire UFC roster. You know what I mean? You want to talk about elite, elite athletes, elite, right? Right? Like that's not where I'm at anymore. No. But at the same time, other people look at us and they think that because they've never put themselves in a position where they've allowed themselves to really, really become the best version of themselves. So I'll, I will also, I will argue their side a little bit because this table right here, and the circles that we hold ourselves close to. There is a nature versus nurture aspect over that because think about how many people you know and how many people have achieved what we've achieved and still maintain what we maintain. Yes, and we work our fucking asses off, but there are a lot of dumb motherfuckers out there. Oh, and there are a lot of motherfuckers out there that no matter how hard they work, will never ever fucking be what we are yeah and another so, point, there is that little bit of that aspect. another point on that it's like you know when i was a young ranger there was plenty there was plenty of guys that were fucking better athletes than me mm-hmm. and it's because like i know the guys that grew up wrestling or playing soccer since the time they were four yeah. bro they've been training for 15 years by the time they became a ranger right. bro i was just a fucking skater yeah, I lifted weights and whatever, but I wasn't like one of those guys. Right. And you know what's crazy, dude, is I literally got out of regiment 20 years ago on the 15th of this month. 20-year anniversary of leaving 2nd Battalion. Holy shit, bro. And I follow like, you know, there's Brotherhood of a Scroll or these different bro, pages. that's when I'm picking you up in Salt Lake City on the 15th of September. Elaborate. You said 15th of this month, but... No, 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 no. no. Of August. August. Oh, of August. Yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I just okay, hit it. Yeah, right, right. And so... But there's all these groups where, like, the Rangers, past and present, are, like, stay in touch. Yeah. Bro, my whole generation, I shouldn't say my whole generation, but a lot of them, bro, they got big bellies and shit now. Yeah. Well, for sure, And bro. it's like, yeah. what the fuck? Dude, bro. we were savages. Bro, we're in our 40s, homie. I look I I look back on, on dudes that I deployed with, you know, just looking at their Facebook page or whatever they're putting. I'm like, dude. You're, well, we're the same age and look at you look at what like what happened bro yeah, dude bro, you bro, know you know what sometimes i go back to brazil <laughs> and when i meet my friends bro it's like it's scary bro yeah dude. i can never organize them you know Fuck, so do those man. people just fall Fed out of contact bad, you know? with a circle that that not i don't want to say holds them accountable but allows themselves to compare themselves to yeah. other people with the same benchmark yeah and bro and the other thing is it's like when you have, I talk about all the time with veterans, if if the fucking deployment to Ramadi that we were both on in 2004 was our Super Bowl, then yeah. after that, dude, what are you chasing? Right. You know? And if you're not chasing something, if that's your Super Bowl and that's, it's like the Uncle Rico thing. You yeah. Know, I, I can throw this football over that mountain. That's, yeah. <laughs> and if that's, if that's your focus still, back when, oh, dude, when I was a ranger in 2004, that's the easiest, quickest path to just becoming a fat, incapable piece of shit. And nobody gives a fuck what you did in 2004. No. Right? You know? No. And, and nor does it apply really to anything today. To anything. You know, it's like, and I think that's the biggest thing is like, we keep reinventing ourselves in one form or another. And like I was saying earlier, like I fucking turned in my commission, my badge 
all my fucking SWAT kit like two days ago. So you dropped your bags. And bro, like this is like the first time in 20 years that I really haven't had a badge and haven't been on this fucking thing ready for a call out at a moment's notice. Like someone's being held hostage. I'm getting the fucking call to go save the fucking day. And I'm like, Ooh, how does that make me feel? It's kind of fucked up to be honest with you. Cause I kind of associated my, with my day. And let's be honest. I wasn't a real cop for the last fucking five years. Well, you were full time. Your whole position was the SWAT. Team. My whole position was the SWAT stuff, which is, and, uh, but, but, but also it's not like you got there by accident. You no, were I was a real cop. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know? I was a fucking, like I was a fucking patrol cop, real cop, street yeah. crimes. Narco- I did all of it, obviously. And then but you like, earn the right to be able to pick and choose. Yeah. But like now I don't get, I won't get that call. You know what? You know, it's, it's a little fucking trippy. When, when people ask me what I miss about law enforcement, the truth is I miss flying armed when yeah, I was with the enough. feds. Yeah, 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 fair enough. And when I was as a local cop, the thing I miss the most is being able to drive as fast as I Getting want. Getting out of tickets. <laughs> Because you can't get tickets. <laughs> and and it's funny because one of my supervisors asked me that question. Mm. She's like, what do you think? What do you think you're going to miss the most? Yeah. Being able to drive as hey, fucking and, fast and as I, I said, being able to drive as fast as I want. We were, uh, we were coming across the causeway, <laughs> heading to the airport. And uh, the causeway police kind of pulled in front of us in the lane next to us. Like paced us. Because, because we had a, a pretty massive drop in speed limit coming yeah. up. Yeah. Um, oh, and, oh, waiting to nab you. Oh, yeah, yeah. They pay yeah. Us big time. But, but that's wait, the worst for you but, cops out there that, that sit and try and nab people where it goes from 55 to 35. Fuck you. Hey, be a you better, suck. be a better human. Uh, but yeah, so we're getting closer to the thing, and, and he goes, Oh, wait, I need to slow down because I don't have my badge anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I never missed the profession. I get people that ask me that question fairly often, and it's usually cops. Because the world is full of cops that don't want to be cops anymore. For sure. I I I, I had the gig. I had the golden goose. You did. Yeah, I had yeah, the yeah. golden goose. You yeah. know, so like. And bro, you, like explosive breacher. Yeah. On the SWAT team. Yeah. Roger this. And I got an operational uh, operational breach the day before I turned all my shit in. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, bro. So I was scheduled to turn all my shit on Tuesday, last Tuesday. And uh, Monday morning, I got up super early and went and taught morning class at my academy with uh, one of my other black belts. He's a fucking stud. He's actually a fed and a fucking rock star. And uh, fucking cleaning up, cleaning the mats, fucking packing up and boop, 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 boop. My fucking pager goes off. My fucking my fucking response system goes off. I'm like, fuck. And like barricade, murder suspect, fucking one person down, like like critical and so i fucking race home fucking like just barely rinse off as i'm fucking getting jocked up and uh we go out there and and uh of course i've got all my shit prepped like they say like they say like favor you know what is the luck favors the prepared well why do i get always get the explode the operational explosive breaches Cause I'm fucking. Cause you're prepared. Cause I'm prepared. I got all the shit. So we're you read, out there. You read Mike's book, of course. You, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking prepared. Yeah, absolutely. But no, that's the truth. And I've lived my life that way. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons we we all hit it off. And you know, same thing with Mike and stuff. Um, but we're out there on scene, and and uh, it was a fucking uh, the wife shot the husband. Oh shit! Yeah, wife shot Do, the husband. You don't hear that very often. No, you don't. Wife shot the husband. Husband basically escaped out of the house. And what the fuck did he do to get shot? Right, 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 right. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's where my brain yeah. was. What, what did he say, hey, bro? Yeah. <laughs> better, been, better been a real good piece of pussy. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking golden goose oh, pussy. Oh shit. Um, he probably wasn't eating her ass. <laughs> that's, neither, what it, that's, that's what neither, it was. That's neither here that's nor there. That's probably what he's not doing. <laughs> no. Um, is there more to the story? So he fucking ends up dying on the way to the hospital. Okay. So now it's she's now she's a murder suspect, right? She's barricaded inside the house, and man, uh, that doesn't happen with females. No, I know, I know. So anyway, long story short, we're like, all right, here's what we're gonna do. We need to, you know, we need to pop, you know, do do the breach on the door and stuff. 
I was like, the only way to do this is explosive breach. Like, she's already, it's a murder suspect. No sense, like, standing in front of the door and fucking hitting her with a ram. That's fucking stupid. Yeah. And it was a recessed door with a, a wrought iron gate, so we couldn't put our Bearcat ram, the, yeah. the fucking donger of justice on the Bearcat, <laughs> you know? Um, so I fucking had a fold and foam, fucking 75 grain linear charge. Actually, you know Joel. Joel, yeah. built, Joel built the charge. It was fucking beautiful. Oh, you don't build your own charges? No, I build charges too. But <laughs> Joel, Joel had that charge, and uh, but I heard it. All so my you were prepared systems. because of Joel. Because but of all Joel. my no, all my firing systems are already. <laughs> He's like no, yeah. no, 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 no. no. Bro, Listen, it was Greg's God last day. It. It was Greg last day. It's my last yeah. day. <laughs> it's Greg's last day. The important part is the, the firing fun, systems. Fun so I had all my firing systems already prepped and set, and 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 I was already clipped into to blasting caps and stuff. So it fucking went up, fucking cut the door in half, fucking bam. Yeah, so anyway, got a got an operational and then breach. did she go peacefully? She fucking killed herself on the breach. Fucking, oh, really? Yeah, 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 shot herself, yeah. So she was dead. I think that's probably what I'd do if I was her. She, she was dead in, like, literally, like, in the foyer right where I dropped the door, <laughs> fucking dead, pool of blood. At right that point, her. you have really two options, suicide by cop or off right, yourself. Right, right. And you guys don't deserve to get shot. No, 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 for sure. And, you but, know, like, but bro, she's going to jail for the rest of her life, forever. Or she's getting shot and killed. You know, yeah. like, let, let, let's be honest. So, yeah, no, she shot herself on the breach, fucking killed herself. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was fortunately, you know, non non eventful for us for the most part. But it was cool because I got an operational breach the day before I turned all my shit. In. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, I was actually thinking about this the other day because. You know when you're in the police academy and you're you're going through your domestic violence classes and all that shit. One thing that they always say, at least up here in liberal Washington, is don't think that domestic violence is men being violent towards women. It goes both ways. Women can be the the perpetrator of domestic violence just as likely as a man. All the shit, right? Yeah. Like, and then I started thinking about this. I think I was really high the other night, just <laughs> thinking about random shit. And I was like, dude, if any man I knew called the police because he was a victim of domestic violence, it's like, you're not my friend anymore. You're not my friend anymore, bro. <laughs> like, je- like dude, Jenny- so my wife shot me. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that's what is crazy, bro. That's what, made me, that's what made me think about it. Cause it's like nuts. As I stand okay, there with now, a, now with got a bitches. steak knife coming out of my eyes. <laughs> like, dude, bro. I'm hurt. Dude. <laughs> Jenny doesn't have the capacity to make me a victim of violence. No, but That's look. So, <laughs> <laughs> so look, when I first came back from uh, United Arab Emirates, right? I, uh, I worked for that like fucking multi-millionaire dude, billionaire dude. And uh, he was an older gentleman not in the best physical fitness or health, had heart or heart issues. Did his wife whoop his ass? Is that where this is going? And married, married this fucking young hot chick who was fucking batshit crazy. Yeah, and, and she I, I can tell dude, you why he bro, married her. She, she would beat the fuck out of him. <laughs> is he, bro? Is he, bro? You tell me that story. I if I was her, bro. <laughs> you tell me that story. Give me my and, you know, Give me some money. My default <laughs> fucking reaction is laughter. Oh, I know. Me too. Well, that's one of the reasons I got hired. Because <laughs> they, were worried, they were worried word. she was going to kill him. Oh, shit. Bro, Jesus, I bro. show up to the house one day. I show up to the house one day. And she is chasing him around the yard. With a folded up fucking um, power cable, power cable from like a fucking computer, like the wife, and she's fucking whipping the fuck out of him with that shit, bro. He, he likes that shit. He likes yeah, BDSM yeah. shit. You know? I had to fucking put my hands on her. Can you imagine running from your woman? Oh, no. I've told the story. I think I've told the story. Dude, in the, in the, the words of Chris Rock, I won't hit a bitch, but I shake the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I've me and Jenny got in a gnarly fight. I'm sure I've told you guys this story before. And we don't get gnarly fights very often. Yeah. But still fucking happens, right? For sure. And yeah. she was standing in front of me and she went she like puffed her fucking chest up and, and made her fist. Jenny did that? Bro, yeah. She was like <laughs> and, So like I cannot even see Bro, that. yeah. <laughs> hey, it's it's every pre assault indicator <laughs> All right. is is happening in real time. Bro, right here. That's Put it right I, here. That's what I said. Fucking send it. I said, babe. Because <laughs> if you knock me out, good on you. That's but if said, you don't <laughs> straight up, I said, dude, you, your body language is acting like you want to fight me. And we're not going to fight each other. Yeah, you can punch me in the jaw as hard as you want right now. I'll give you a freebie just to show you you don't have the capacity to hurt me. Like, I used to fight fucking 200-pound men. Yeah. 
You don't have the capacity. No, right. You don't have that yeah. inside of you. And bro, that's not what you say to your wife. <laughs> when, <laughs> when she she, throw. When she, she wants throw, to throw, she throw. I, I, I've, made, I've made some some crazy chick. <laughs> she throw hands, man. <laughs> I never hit back. You know, and like you say, it's like it hits you and nothing happens, but you get mad. Bro. You get mad, you know. Bro, <laughs> I said that to mad, a woman at, at the bar, airport bar, in Salt Lake City. Makes a thing about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, you want to? Yeah, you I said that move, to a woman, right? fucking at a bar head, the other day. <laughs> she was talking. We were, we were talking about jujitsu. So I don't really like jujitsu because, like, but I did Krav Maga and I kind of laughed. And she was like, "What? You don't?" I was like, "Krav, Krav Maga is fucking stupid." <laughs> I was like, "I'll just be completely honest. Krav Maga is stupid, especially for women for self defense." I said, "Look, I can stand here and do this with my chin, and let you fucking swing me as hard as you fucking want. You're not gonna do fucking anything to me." Well, bro, I mean, <laughs> the reality of any the, the reality of any art that you can't spar live now it's not real. It's not real, no. Yeah. Because this is bro, too dangerous yeah, for us yeah. to do for real. So. We can't do it in real life because we'll kill it's people. Needle. It's and needle. and yeah. it's like, dude, oh the reality of how you win a fight, it's angles, it's timing, it's positioning. It's all the little nuances, right? And stress and, inoculation. like 100%. Yeah. There's also the surprise element. But, bro, how much is like, you can know, fucking, right? you can hit mitts and look like a fucking Floyd May Mayweather. <laughs> And then when you actually spar someone, it's like, oh, this is this is it's hitting mitts and sparring. It's, a street. it's not even hold yeah, on, yeah, yeah. it hits back. Yeah, <laughs> there's stuff coming. It's not me. even the same thing. No. It's not even the same realm, dude. Yeah. And so it's like, bro, you think you can fucking you take your cardio kickboxing and you learn a one two three combo yeah, and you think you're ready to defend pop, yourself? Pop pads doesn't mean you 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 can fight, man. No. You know? It means you can throw punches, but it doesn't mean that you can receive punches and keep throwing back and you know and all the strategy. Well, here's the, the other thing too. It means you can throw timing. punches on a static punching bag totally. that doesn't move. Totally. And bro, so like, can you cut angles and really throw combos that yeah. are gonna fucking land? It's like those dudes. Can you doing, counter punch? Making, making like breaking baseball bats <laughs> with foot logs. Oh, like, yeah. yeah, for the baseball bat doesn't doesn't hit back, right? <laughs> 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 the baseball bat don't know who hooks. <laughs> yeah. And dude, another thing is like and maybe I'm just hardwired fucking pussy, but like if you're not constantly getting hit, like dude Charles was in town and this was like five years ago now. It's a long time ago. But Charles was like, hey you want to get a couple rounds in? Like fighting rounds. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to say no, no, you know? Yeah. And dude, I noticed it within 10 seconds. Like, oh, I, I don't like getting hit anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. like, no, there's, there's a, there's a physiological reaction to getting punched in the face that you have to you get, get rid of, to. inoculated sure. to through training. And since I don't get hit in the head all the time anymore, I was finding myself having a flinch response. Bro, it's the same thing with shooting. Yeah. I tell people that all the time with shooting. You know, fucking, fucking uh, anticipation and, and flinching, right? Fucking Delta Force operator, right? CAG, CAG operator, he flinches. Yep. Fucking Susie Soccer Mom flinches. Problem is Susie Soccer Mom flinches fucking seven inches every third round. Fucking unit operator flinches a fucking eighth of an inch every hundred rounds, right? Fucking swap rolls. Susie Soccer Mom Take her shooting every fucking day for the next year. Don't let the fucking unit operator fucking shoot for a year. Yeah. Who's going to flinch more? Yep. It's fucking, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's physiology. I'll tell you what though. I mean, we talked about this offline a little bit. I took the girls out shooting Jenny and Ange and some of her friends and, uh, man, women fucking listen bro women are smarter than we are they bro. listen more they're fucking the range. smarter than yeah. we are period they're smarter than we are for it because a lot of those girls i mean sure they've shot a gun in their life but that was their first like block of instruction yeah. talking about the actual fundamentals of marksmanship and whatnot <laughs> and bro they were fucking drilling steel at past 60 yards like it was easy and i told them i was like most police officers couldn't hit a fucking C zone E type silhouette yeah. at fucking twenty five yards, <laughs> and they're hitting it at sixty, dude. And uh, it was actually cool because uh, one of the Glocks was having a couple of issues, and I'm not sure. I thought it was a limp wrist malfunction for most of it. I'm not sure if it I'll, if it happens more, we'll have to address it. Yeah, but uh, Ange got a couple of clicks instead of bangs, and bro, I'm telling you, didn't even move, didn't even fucking move, just click, 
And I was like, <laughs> uh, smarter than and she's like, what the, what's going on? I was like, you know what? Nothing. Everything's I'll perfect. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm actually glad that that happened. Because, dude, she got out to 97 yards That's hitting crazy. steel yeah. consistently. Yeah. And it's, it's like, fuck, dude. If you listen and you fucking just put your ego aside, it actually, like, yeah, yeah. you got me drilling steel out 100 yards. Bro. You know? It's amazing. Right? Oh, you're cheating because you got a red dot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. We're good. Told you, hey, good. I want to cheat to be better. So I was told that once. I was, I was working with... Um, Charlie 210, so 10th group, uh, second battalion, SIF, out of Colorado. CRIF, SIF. Yeah, this, Sif. yeah sorry. Yeah, it's not like, the SIF anymore. It's the CRIF now. <laughs> it's not even the CRIF anymore. The CRIF's been disbanded. Now they're like the fucking hard target unit, blah, 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 whatever bullshit. Oh, you motherfuckers that were talking shit on Instagram because I had the fucking CRIF fucking, fucking, Mary, uh, fucking Mary Ross flag on my fucking kit. Fuck off, right? <laughs> All right, anyway, so... We were doing a fucking walk back drill, just playing around, fucking me and the guys. And uh, same thing, we got up to like 120 yards. I had a red dot on my gun. They were running irons. And uh, fucking ding, I hit it, right? And the one dude, fucking nothing. And he's like, fuck, man. Oh, you got a red dot on your gun. I was like, cool. Is that a nine mil? Let me, let me, see, what, let me see what you got. And he passed me his gun over him. I said, there you go. There's your fucking red dot motherfucker. (laughs) Dude, I've told a lot of people that story that you told me about how shooting with a red dot, then you you, you ran uh, a diagnostic on irons before you switched to red dot and then ran the same diagnostic after three months on a red dot and you were better. Yeah. Well, it makes you shooting with the red dot makes you have to have. I don't want to say perfect fundamentals, but like everything has more, to be more precise. Right. Yeah, for yes. sure. More well, precise I, fundamentals. I think the red dot, the way that it moves around in the, in the window, I think it, 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 it shows you your inconsistency. Your inconsistency. Here's how, here's how yeah. it was explained to me. Right. And, and, and I don't have a whole ton of love for the dude. I won't even mention his name, but here's how it was, how it was explained to me by a multiple time, like world and national you know, competitive shooter. He's like, when you aim in in that red dot and that dot's going bouncing around like a fucking bee, like a wasp, your irons are doing the same thing. You just don't recognize it as much because they're spread across the slide radius and they're big, chunky, fat pieces of metal. But your irons are doing the same thing. You just don't see it the same Mm -hmm. as your red dot. So as you learn to settle that red dot, now you're settling your irons. So, yeah, so I guess that's what I was trying to get yeah. at is that, so, like, if you want your dwell time to be faster, right. you have to get the gun on target right? and, and do all the, the stuff properly, which means lining your sights up. Well, if you're calming down that red dot and you're tabling the gun the way you're supposed to, presenting the gun when you're supposed to, you know, you're going to make that, that's that exactly time right. difference up. Yep, so, that's yeah, exactly in, right. in the end, it makes you do all that small stuff better better a hundred percent absolutely 100%. bro i'll tell you this though because i have a lot of people tell me like dude the transition is just hard i'm, I'm i can't find the dot or i'm dude my first actual time shooting my red dot was with you on the range i instantly liked it better yeah, for sure oh uh, for bro, sure i tell you what, from, from the point of view of like a, an amateur right you guys have much more experience than me on, on the shooting part <clears throat> bro when i started shooting red dots with greg lapping my iron sights improve my the presentation because you have to you have to put the the, the gun on the angle mm-hmm. where you can see the dot yeah right and that's already a good angle for is a good presentation for, for the iron sights. 100%. And, and i have both guns right i have few yeah. few iron sizes still and bro the the transition for me wasn't hard because basically i i learned how to shoot on red dots doing dry uh, dry fire yeah Right, I have this American flag on my on my on my living room, and I am in one of the stars, and that was my drill. Right, which Draw star? Yeah. I guess since you're American citizen, that's okay. Yeah, totally, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the flag helping me improve my skills. There you go, there, uh, fucking Roger you know, that to be a better citizen. Okay, the yeah, Roger that. You know? When did your citizenship come through again? Uh, a couple years ago. Was well, last year, last year January. So was Biden the one that gave the uh, unfortunately yeah. the speech? Uh, I mean, bro, natural not speech, but like video. Was on my, 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 yeah, my, yeah, yeah, my, no. my naturalization certificate is signed by Biden. Unfortunately, well, bro, because like, but well, I'm I glad I have you. a certification. 
You know, <laughs> <laughs> at so, least you J- have. So J J J J O A O. I remember. Uh, it's not s- completely similar, but I sympathize because uh, I know a lot of people have died in the fires. But uh, I almost lost my '67 Corvette in a fire once Bro, on my like, lakefront house. What the fuck? <laughs> let me, let me <laughs> shake your hand. <laughs> Bro, that's reality. <laughs> We got our an, an Bro, idiot, a fucking a idiot, fucking idiot, a fucking idiot, like complete, like a fucking maybe idiot. borderline retarded. Well, and bro, like, oh, he's, I don't give a fuck if he's old. Like I'm over old people, bro. If you're old and, and it's, it makes you incapable of like a perfect example, bro. I was at a fucking intersection two weeks ago and there's a car in front of me and the light's green and we're turning right. Yeah. And he, he pulls forward and then he stops and then he pulls forward and, he, and I'm like, the fucking light is green. Don't drive dude. anymore. And then he turns right and then the next left is into my neighborhood. Yeah. And he, he goes to turn left and then he slams on his brakes and stops. And there's no cars coming. Yeah. Don't drive anymore. And then he, and then he starts to pull forward and then he slams on his brake and stops. And bro, I'm fucking livid now sure, because what he did is it forced me to be yeah, like stuck out in the middle of the road. Like his dumb ass is. Yeah. And then I get up on his fucking ass and there's a sticker that says elderly driver, please be patient with me. Fuck you. Yeah, like, well, you know, you're, the you're putting the, the community at risk. At risk. And, <laughs> and that's, that's what it comes and, down and, to. And, and because you're 80 years Would old, you? I'm supposed to yeah. fucking have some kind of sympathy for you? And that's the you? problem. You're what putting everyone else at risk. About? And the fact of the matter is like, not to sound harsh, like if you're that fucking dementia and fucking incompetent, like a long time. Not that long ago, you'd be fucking dead. Yeah, bro. And would so, you, like, would you old people allow die. Your I hate to, to run say your it. business. Yeah, fuck you know? no. Like, old people die. And it so, is bro, what it is. I told Jenny, I was like, dude, I was behind this fucking guy that was like 90. And I said, he could barely see over the dash. He was stopping. And she goes, and you know, Jenny is like, she remembers cars and models and colors right. and everything. She's like, oh, is it a little red <clears throat> Kia, blah, 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 Sorento or something? I was like, yeah. She goes, yeah, he lives in our neighborhood. I've seen that guy driving like that all cool. the time. Well, he shouldn't be driving anymore. I'm going to go slash all of his Seriously, tires, dude. And I'm going to put a pillow over his head. And, bro, that like I was just as mad about that. And that's that's just a, we, uh, we could just take his license. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, let's just yeah, let's just take his. <laughs> no, no, think about that. Same shit. Okay. So I don't give take a fuck. His license, take his life, whatever. I don't give a fuck if it's a license <laughs> or if it's the fucking presidential position. No, if you can't fucking do it. Don't do don't it. fucking do it. do it. And that motherfucker, like, dude, and I, I've spent a lot of time in Lahaina. And like, I'm sure you guys are probably everyone's probably spent a decent amount of time in Maui. Something about the Hawaiian I've culture. Hawaii. Have you really never been to Hawaii? Never been to Hawaii. Oh, bro. I'm telling you. Man, a brow wants me to go to Hawaii so bad. And it's a it's fucking cool. Cool vibes, yeah. cool energy. And uh, you know, me and Jenny went to Lahaina like a couple times over the last year. And there's a there's a fucking catamaran called Sailing Trilogy that like we went out on for the day. Super fucking cool people. Those same people were out taking their catamaran around, like rescuing people as people were yeah, fucking yeah, drowning and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like heavy shit, yeah. dude. And uh, for that motherfucker to go there and be cracking jokes about a '67 Corvette, you need to be beaten to death, dude. Like yeah. fuck you, man. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's. It's obviously because he's demented. That's what's going on. Bro, and, and my father fucking totally fucked up. I watched my father die of dementia. Yeah. And it, it fucking was an eight year process. And he's in the fucking throes of it. As someone yeah, that's yeah. intimately familiar with it. And no one's and, gonna, no one's willing to fucking but say also anything. Keep, this is mine. He's also he's in the throes of it, but he's also the most powerful man in the world, basically, who's being taken care of. In every fucking step of the way, and monitored, and ha- trying to make it seem like he doesn't, oh, you can't and he s- still does, and he still is fucking everything up. And bro, you got his fucking handlers that are he'll joke and be like, "Oh, you know, they told me not to talk about that today." Uh, bro, I run a jujitsu academy, and there's not one person on planet Earth that can tell me what I can say and what I can't say. Yeah. You're the fucking president of the United States. It's because he's fucking incompetent. And fucking, it's it's insanity, dude. Which segues us into the fucking conversation we had at dinner. That I'm 45. I'm the oldest person here. Well, almost 45. 45 in a couple months. Oldest person here. You're still the old, oldest person. Here. I am still the oldest person here, right? I'm still, Let's, not like almost five years. You're you, Greg. You're behind me. You're 40, I turned 43 in October. You turned 43 in October. Push that over. Joe is the youngest. The, ni- the, the 19th. 
October 19th of October. That's right. Yeah. How do I, I know your birthday, bro? Come on. Bro, I fuck it, bro. <laughs> I, I, check this out. I don't even know what month your birthday's in. <laughs> I don't care. That's, I, I'm okay with okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a better friend than you are. That's cool. <laughs> what were you going to say, though? What were we saying? At so, yeah. So, you know, I was, I was having this conversation the other day. I've got another good 15 years in me. Yeah. That's yeah. it. That, 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 that is it. Like realistically, like, like moving forward, I got another good 10, 15 years in me, bro. That's where I'm at. Too. And honestly, like I'm on the path to make sure and ensure that when my time is up, it's up, up, up. Like I'm fucking dead. I'm going down, down in a blaze of glory. I'm going to fucking wreck a car. I'm going to wreck a motorcycle. I'm going to go down from fucking lead poisoning and a gunfight, like fucking something. I'm not moving on and being fucking demented. I'm not going to be demented. I'm not going to be fucking bound to a wheelchair. Nope. nope. Like, dude, I'm fucking running this till the wheels fucking fall. The and fuck it's, off. it's funny because we both came to the same conclusion thinking about this over the last couple months and we've never discussed it yeah no and it just came up and at dinner tonight and i was like the same way dude if i can't fight and fuck and be wild then that's it bro. that's it i'm done i don't want to be 80 years old no having all these motherfuckers have to pander to me that's right. and take care of me wiping your butt yeah wiping yeah. your fucking yeah. butt and dude like washing their shit that's not how fucking warriors live. No. Like, dude, and once, warriors die in fucking war. Once, <laughs> but, but once you're a fucking, once you're a liability to Take the tribe, money. you're fucking done. It's time to go, man. Yeah. Human beings have become fixated and fascinated with keeping a heartbeat. Yeah. And that ain't no, fuck, living, no, no. dude. I figure I've got, I, I, I think I probably have a pretty good life until like 62. 62, 63. I think I can still be pretty fucking savage till 62, 63. And then after that, I'm fucking out. I'm I'm out. I will figure I will figure out a way to go down a blaze of glory. Epic way to go out. What's that? An epic way. Yeah, yeah. I'll figure out a fucking way. Beautiful way to yeah, die yeah. like a yeah. warrior. Because honestly, like right now, like already, like I'm getting more and more um, beat up. <laughs> well, well, yeah, fucking beat up for sure. But also, like, I, I, I'm concerned more, less and less about my longevity and my That's fucking straight I'm, up. I'm, I'm concerned less and less about my actually like my my life and my safety. Yeah, you know, like just naturally. So like, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna fucking drive fast and fucking ride dirt bikes and motorcycles and fucking go into stupid, crazy, fucking dangerous situations and fly airplanes and do dumb shit. As fucking wild as I can, I'm good right now. Thank Bro, you. I think until I think, I'm fucking the wheels fall off. I think our commitment gone. to this life is to set our children up to be able to fucking hundred fucking percent take the reins 100%, and live a powerful life. And, that's and once thing. we've done that, yeah, we're fucking set. No, exactly. Bro. And that's the thing. Like my kids, like let, let's just say 15 years, 60, 60 years old, 15 years. Jackson will be fucking 28. Gem will be 25. Yeah. They're fucking grown, bro. I've given them everything that I can fucking give. Will they be sad their dad died? Sure. You're always sad your parents died. Even if you're fucking like fucking 70 years old and your parents are fucking 90, 90 something. Like, yeah, you're going to be sad. But you know what? I don't need to be around anymore. <laughs> if I'm fucking 63, 64 years old, what good am I doing? Well, I don't I, need to be fucking around I guess, anymore. I guess I should but, say but this. Say, there, there, is, there is an after two, bro. You're going to have grandkids. Imagine how cool you're gonna be for those kids, bro. Yeah, but you know, if I do, if it happens, it happens. I don't know. I'm fucking, I'm fucking riding a dirt bike off a fucking cliff, <laughs> <laughs> like the fucking. Uh, you saw Tom Cruise did his own stunt. Yeah, 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 driving that dirt bike off the cliff yeah. and then parachuting. Yeah, that's pretty badass, okay. dude. Or I'll just fucking get like autoerotic asphyxiated and choke to death fall fucking or something like that. Eating ass. Well, and I'm gonna eat same, ass. Be I'm gonna same eat, yeah, I'm gonna eat ass Let's while see. getting choked, and I'm gonna just fucking die while eating ass. It, dude, the I truth is like, <laughs> <laughs> listen, bro. If if I hit 65 and I still feel like a savage, oh, we're, we're gonna keep going. Then it's then it's on, right? Fuck yeah. I'm not saying like, oh, 65, fuck life. That's it. No, I'm simply <laughs> saying once I can't be the animal that I like being, then done. Then it's done, dude. For sure, 100. And that's and bro, the thing is, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Like, I agree. 
you watch an, anything in nature, the second, the, and not even like the minute, the second that its body is well, the, physically the compromised. Next savage in the tribe comes up and takes it. Yeah. But dude, like I remember when I was a little boy, when we, I lived in Alaska and I would stand on the end of the dock and these schools of fish would come by and I had a hook in the water and I was trying to snag them. Right. Yeah. And I would, I would try and hook a fish as the school went by. And a lot of times I'd just like snag one on its pectoral fin, Yeah. but I wouldn't get it. Right. And then that fish would start swimming. As soon as its fin was a little fucked up or like the hook put a tear in it or something, it swam a little out of alignment, bro. I'm not exaggerating within 10 seconds of these fish swimming out of alignment a bigger fish would come up from bottom and, eat and, that one. and snatch it out of the store. Sure, absolutely. Because it showed, it, was the weak, weak one. it showed weakness. It was the weak one, yeah. And that's fascinating, bro. Yeah, fuck yeah. But that, and it's the same thing on the savannas. If there's a fucking limp in any of the zebras fucking. That's true. Yeah, they're I, done. I read, I read an article the other day that says that the moment that uh, civilization happened was the moment where a femur could be broken. Right, and you could survive because no animal can survive a broken femur in nature. Yeah, right. Right, the humans are the the only ones. Why? Because now you have a community taking care of you while you're out of action. Right. Yeah. And that shows. That's the, the the first sign of civilization. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So that's that's how you you see. So, bro, a broken leg means that you're fucking done. hundred yeah. percent. Unless you're the human. Yeah. You know. I'm sitting here talking shit on injured people as I'm hobbling, hobbling around <laughs> with my bad back. <laughs> you know, it's funny too. It's like my bad name of Jack up beat me. I, I literally said, I think it was last week. I was talking about how, bro, I haven't been injured in forever. Like I felt like there was a block of time, and it was shortly after I opened this place where I was in my late 30s, and I started getting hurt. All the fucking time, dude. And I was starting to think, dude, is jujitsu going to be fucking done for me? Can I not do this anymore? Yeah. And then I got into this like routine. And I honestly think it's because I left law enforcement because I'm not sitting in a car all day. I don't have kit on, on all shit. day. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I started feeling stronger. Yeah. And like I was talking about it last week and I was like, dude, knock on wood. Like I'm not getting hurt. And like the next practice, bam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. That's bro, what, you and me both, man. That's what happens, dude. Fucking that's what happens, dude. You're fucking in your 40s grappling every day with a bunch of fucking 20-year-old kids. Well, I don't think the the CrossFit workout did. That's what I was going to say. It was, a, it was the either. CrossFit workout that did me in. Fuck CrossFit. Bro, the, 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 I honestly think the reality is CrossFit kind of grinds you to dust. It's like it's a hard, like it, it puts your body through the ringer. Mm -hmm. And that's cool. Because I think our bodies do need to be put through the ringer. I think there's a time and a place for that. But what I've found, man, is jujitsu also puts your body through the ringer, yeah. right? So if if your workouts and your hobbies put you through the ringer. are all putting you through the ringer, it's hard to gonna break. something gives, man. So like I I switched literally six six weeks ago to bodybuilder lifting, yep. That's what like do, benching, so squats, curls tricep extensions overhead press like very controlled movements i haven't felt better and stronger in years that's the secret when you're older you have yeah. to slow down your your pace but now no, but it's still making the reps you know what i mean yeah so you don't have the lateral movement you don't have the back and forth that yes. fast speed you have only the movement isolated movement oh uh, yeah right you know and you get the pump i was talking to the guys about this today i was like dude I'm about the pump right now. I'm older, you know. I want to make sure my joints are, are good. I want to look good. And that's basically it. You know, every time I lift the, the barbell over my head, I fuck up my back. So yeah. Somehow, you know. So bodybuilding uh, style of lifting, I think, is the best for when you're older. Also, you, you, you see, like, older people, right? Black belts, red belts, cor uh, coral belts training jiu-jitsu but you don't see wor old wrestlers training right right i don't remember seeing an older dude training yeah crossfit i mean of course there is one other dude here and there that of course they are like above the average right and they can make it but you as an average yeah, yeah you don't see an older person starting on crossfit, CrossFit. but jiu-jitsu bro jiu-jitsu is forever uh, you have that that quote from Kali Slater, right, saying that jiu-jitsu is the that? best first Ash. sport, right? 
the road. Jiu Jitsu is also the best last sport, right? Because you can go as easy as rolling with a seven year old, right? So light, so like playing around and you just move right in the right way and you don't get hurt. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or training with a, your professor, which is, knows exactly the amount of pressure and movement and flow you have to put in order to match your, 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 your space, right? So at the end of the day, bro, uh, CrossFit hurts, you man. You well, know? and bro, that's and if you wanna if you wanna keep going to the older age, you have to, it must be jujitsu, bro. I'm yeah. I'm putting it out there right now. I'm done with CrossFit. Yeah, bro, that's why I told you to send all day. angry bro. CrossFit emails to. Uh, yeah, send them to <laughs> fuck you <laughs> at gmail.com. I, I told you that. <laughs> no, bro. Said, well, <laughs> so here, I'll, let me finish the story. I was I've been doing bodybuilder lifting and hard jujitsu. And those two things paired, I'm feeling fucking great. Yeah. Then I watched the CrossFit Games. And there was a workout <laughs> where they had a 200-pound medicine or sandbag on their shoulder. And they had to walk five meters and then do five squats. Walk five meters and then do five squats. It sounds horrible. A bro, it looked horrible. <laughs> and I was like... Let's do it. No, 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 no. no. So this is what I was thinking. This is what, I, what could go I wrong? Told, I told you, half savage, right? Yeah, yeah. Because they were do, the workout, they were doing it with a 200-pound bag. I don't have anything like that. At my gym, my heaviest medicine ball is 100. Which is... Dude, that's a pretty heavy medicine ball, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to try that workout with half the weight and see how it feels. And I did it, and it fucking wrecked me. But because that was my first time not working out where the weight is balanced and i'm being meticulous sure, i'm being in control you got 100 pounds on one shoulder zero pounds on the other shoulder and i felt everything tighten up yeah. and i was like ooh, yeah and then i was like well now it's time to do jujitsu though and i was doing hard rounds with will and fucking pop it was the instability of crossfit followed by fucking death rounds for sure it's just not i just don't think it's a good combination no and there are plenty of people that if crossfit's your thing i think that's cool but i think the combination of the two of them because i used to think this place would have dude everybody would be doing both no, where the not. gyms are right no. next to each other they're right and i don't think separate. it's it's not just a cultural thing i think it's probably too much for I have, most I have people two crossfitters i have two crossfitters that train you to my gym regularly that's it. Two. Yeah. And we're about there too. You know. And you know what I hear? And this might be top secret information. I shouldn't be putting it out. But my CrossFitters are like, I'm enjoying it over here way more. Oh, Jiu Jitsu is right there. Oh, this is where, hey, this is where Jiu Jitsu is better. Come to the dark side. Jiu and that's why I say, I say, don't be the best hey. at fucking exercise. Yeah. yeah. Come to the dark side. <laughs> uh, and, and dude, like Jenny and Ann's CrossFit all the time. I, I don't worry about your fucking long knee high socks and your fucking. There's a lot of good to it. The truth, sure. like, and bro, like, I like watching the games because watching any human being able to outperform people at the highest level is awesome. Fucking inspiring. And they're fucking physical savages. And, and bro, and then like, like one workout was literally like a 50 meter handstand walk, and every 10 meters they had a little a little square like the size of these. Yeah. That you had to do like five push ups. You had to touch your head yeah. uh -huh. and then keep walking and shit. And they were all just doing it like nothing. But you know what? You know what? It won't, they can't beat you in a fight? No. <laughs> we, could, we could fucking murder every uh, one of those one fucking. We, none of us here, well, short of Joao, none of us here are fucking like super elite, high level, like world, champions. world champion grapplers, right? Short of Joao. Yeah. But all three of us right here. Could fucking murder the highest level CrossFit athlete, period, <laughs> with our bare hands. <laughs> you know, so like, how good is that being the best at exercising? Dude, I know. <laughs> and it's cool, man. I like, will kill you in a fight with my bare hands and then I will fucking take your woman. Like, I want, if you're putting in, what were we just, <laughs> that's the reality of we it. We were talking about something earlier. I'm like, if you're putting that much time into something, don't you want to be able to get something? Soccer. Uh, we were soccer. talking about soccer. Uh, touches, no, yeah, because yeah, like football, 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 yeah. football. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, we were watching them on the on, the, on when TV. we were getting dinner yeah. at the yeah. bar. There they was were a like guy. hacky sacking the ball, like yeah, they kicking, were juggling, juggling the ball. Yeah. Juggling and that's what I said. I kicking. said that's a that's a very impressive skill set. Yeah, yeah. And bro, obviously it's good for you. Like I practice juggling because I think it's good for my hand eye yeah, coordination, sure, right? So those dudes are obviously building like good neuro pathways. They're building their dexterity, all that stuff. But it's black belt level fucking hacky sack with a soccer ball. Right. And I'm like. That does nothing for you. 
to get it to get to black belt level we know what kind of work that takes and i'm like that just seems like a lot of dedication to to a a little craft that doesn't really give back to you you know yeah other than he was he was on tv we weren't other than (laughs) other than impressing fucking girls at a party watch this yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna bounce this soccer ball i mean soccer players get pussy apparently well, I would hope. Uh, <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> they make money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. And they're some of the best, like just raw athletes. I got a couple high level soccer players in here. Yeah. And bro, like, yeah, fucking cardio fucking monsters. scary athletic. Yeah. Ath- it's fucking nuts, they're bro. They're fucking babies. Fucking babies. Like <laughs> <laughs> you get bumped into and they fall down. <laughs> fucking built. Bro, that's like that's fucking like. That's the standard now. Oh, I know. I think I told you this going to Levi soccer game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids are falling down and like holding their They're knee like and told stuff. To. They're told to. And I'm like, I don't care if you're told to. <laughs> if you not. fall down and hold your knee, we better be going to the ER. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if, if you fall down and hold your knee and cry, and then they put you back in in five minutes, bro, I will disown you. Bro, it hurts my heart. That, that, that picture you sent me that post you sent me the other day which one where you were giving the gray belt to uh one of them oh i know bro Bro, it hurts my heart that they're not training still like every fucking day because dude right now especially with the shape oh i know bro i tell leave all the time they would fucking fucking hey give every man in here a fucking you know it's you know it's gonna give you know it's gonna make levi come back on the mats is I was at uh we were I don't know if it was fucking some family dinner at his cousin's house mm-hmm. and his cousin's sixteen. He's wrestling. No, bro. His cousin's like and if he hears this, I'm not trying to fucking bust your balls. But he, he just didn't appear to be like a very tough kid yeah. when it comes to like the realm of physical combat. Right. Right. And him and some of his friends were dicking around in the living room. And I said, I said to one of his friends, I said, you tell me what to submit him with. And, and that's what you're getting submitted with. And they're like, oh, dude, I'll do an arm bar on him. Right. So I'm like, yeah. boom, take him down. And I mean, I've been in this kid's life for a long time. Right, so yeah, I can yeah, fuck yeah, around. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I arm bar him and all three of the kids are like, dude, what the fuck? That's awesome. I said, guys, if you spend six months with me, you'll be able to do that to literally any human being, you know. Yeah. And he's been, and it's, it's Levi's little cousin. Yeah. And he took me up on it, and he's been training, and the kid's a savage already. Oh, no shit, huh? Yeah. Bro, it's probably been three months. Yeah. And, and bro, you know what? Like, from nothing to oh, training no. three days oh, a no. week in three months, yeah. and I've especially he being 16. Yeah. It's like their brain, his brain Those is just sponges. fucking, like, just sucking yeah. it in, dude. And I said, bro, like... When he can, when you can beat up your cousins, they're coming back to me because <laughs> they can't have that. No, for sure not. You know, I used your line to a dad the other day in my academy. This is like fourteen year old kids training in adult class. Your household's going to be out of alignment. And the dad was like, the dad's kind of like a pseudo tough guy. Yeah, you know, like thinks he's tough. And uh, I was like, I was like, so when are you going to start? Ah, oh, you know, I'm, I'm shy, I like doing this. Blah blah blah. I'm like, all right. I said, you do understand that if so and so trains with me for the next two years two years 16 he'll be 16 he'll be able to beat you up right there's no hey, way and he hey. kind of like giggled, he like giggled <laughs> like, oh, oh, oh. i was like no 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 no. i'm not i'm hey. like not joking like if he trains with me for the next two years he will be able to fucking choke you unconscious and fucking murder you he'll like be able to me. hold you on the ground yeah. and and, and, rape you. Yeah, and there won't be anything you can do about it. And, <laughs> and hey, like 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 Seth used to say. Yeah, I'm gonna rape you from the front. From the front, so I can look you in the eyes as I fucking demoralize you, you emasculate you. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way. We talked about that, yeah, bro. bro. Yeah, There's no way. no way I would ever let one of my kids be able to do that. To me. No, bro, fuck you no, are, no, no, dude. No. You I'd are. They're training harder, harder, harder. <laughs> well, and, and bro, the, here's the funny thing: is like some of the dads get that. Um, dude marcus is a perfect example yeah. you see how tough marcus is yeah, yeah. he's yeah. here all the time yeah, yeah. he's training his ass off he's fit as fuck yeah and his boy is gonna be right on his heels 
by 16. Oh, yeah. Because he's 14, and he's our top performer right oh, now. Oh, Jackson. And it's like... Dude, Jackson, <laughs> dude, I give Jackson four years before he's fucking yeah. giving me death rounds. I tell Marcus that all the time. <laughs> no, I'm you like, know the deal. I'm like, bro, <laughs> if you don't fucking keep the foot on the gas, Rocco's there. Yeah. So fucking, yeah, bro, yeah. he's no, right there. Uh, for sure. That's the, that's the same thing. You know, dude, fuck Jackson, bro. Jackson is going to be 12. He's been training since he was five. Oh, yeah. You know, he's been training for fucking seven years, dude. And not just like training for seven years. He's been in the gym fucking six days a week during the summer, twice a day, fucking now training the adult class for fucking seven years, bro. Like his technical ability is fucking outrageous. His gr- You can't fucking hurt him. You can smash him. You can grind your forehead into his ear. You can put your elbow on his sternum. Nothing phases him, you know? And it's like, he, he's just waiting for that that muscle. He's waiting for that muscle and the size and the testosterone to drop. Yeah. He's going to be fucking killing everybody. And then he's coming for you. Oh, <laughs> you know, he's coming for you. You know what's cool, though, is you will always be able to settle that teenage son coming for you on the mats. Oh, for yeah. sure, 100%. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, every other human being that I know usually settled that in the kitchen yeah, yeah, or in the yeah, garage. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Backyard. Yeah, everybody has a story when they wanted yeah. to challenge dad. Yeah. You guys are already going to know it all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We, we, you know? sorry. Well, like you said, there's no there's no unknowns in the academy. Yeah, there's no peacocking. Exactly. There's no posture. You can't be full Everybody shit. knows who the fuck can beat who up. Yep. You know, And no one cares either. Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. Bro, I told fucking, <laughs> I told Jenny, I said, dude, Siler can beat you in a fight now. Our fourteen-year-old daughter, and as I, it's very different than my father analogy because head of household, the dad is the one that needs to hold the standard, yeah, yeah, right? For sure. But I said, is it, it feels kind of weird that your daughter could fucking beat you in a fight now? Yep. Your teenage daughter. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Well, I told you last time. So Jackson's getting tough, and to the point now, he's within like thirty pounds of Casey. Uh huh. And uh, he was bragging the other day. He's like, "Dad, mom, uh, mom couldn't submit me. Mom couldn't submit me." I was like, and "Mom's a purple I was like, belt." I was like, "You better be aware of what you say because I bet you, mom was just kind of going easy on you." And, uh, bro, I yeah, watched not the, the next case, huh? <laughs> <laughs> bro. I've rolled with these fucking ass, fucking, bro. And he's, he's a little shit. He goes, dude. Yeah, he's a little shit. He's a little shit. Putting dude. his chin in your face yeah. and shit, or like forehead to your chin. Oh, bro, a little shit, bro. And he don't give a really give a fuck whether you're a black belt or not. Like his dad's a black belt and he tries to fucking do everything. And mom's having a hard time legitimately submitting him now. Bro, his fucking little Ezekiels and shit. Yeah. And you know what's kind of weird? I've noticed the the little kids, sometimes their chokes are worse. Their like, little arms sink right like, in, bro. It's like a little noose. Yeah, yeah, little, yeah, little for sure. Fucking rope wrap around your yeah, neck, yeah. dude. <laughs> I remember how my daughters choked me. I'm like, dude, that's... It's worse than yeah. like being choked by a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. A hundred percent, dude. hundred percent. Yeah, no, it's awesome though. But going back, you guys were talking about like uh, older guys training. So is when's this coming out? Thursday next week? Yeah. Oh, All right, shit. cool. So it'll be after. Uh, yeah, okay. If he shows up. He's coming Wednesday. Oh, okay. I've already All arranged right. it. I've already All talked right. to him. So, <laughs> so we can talk about it. We can talk about it. We can talk about it. So um, I've told you about the guy that came into my gym, 73 years old, Walked into my gym, M- Mike, Mr. Mike. Yeah. Came into my gym, retired state trooper, came in, was like, I don't feel like a predator anymore. I feel like prey. I need to change something. Dude, what a, what a scary place to be, find yourself in. Yeah. 73 but years also, old. Also, how cool for, of him to recognize that. Good on him. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. And he was still doing triathlons yeah. at 73. So he was fit. Like, he's pretty fit. Came in. Fast forward. Two years now. He's 75 now. Bro, he's been training. He comes in three, four days a week. Mm-hmm. Gi and no gi. And dude, so when he rolls, he's got to put on like special like pads and stuff. Because his skin is thin, so he bleeds. And he, uh-huh. he's oh, he owns it. He tells but, me. He's but like, he still comes in. Bro, like, and he's fucking savage, strong, and fucking rolls hard. Rolls hard. So maybe we don't need to cash in at seven. And a, ma- <laughs> and, dude, and a fucking awesome, awesome human. Fucking awesome human. So anyway, uh, he's getting his blue belt on Wednesday. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Which is That's pretty fucking rad. 75 years old, getting your fucking blue belt, came in off the street, never trained, never grappled, and, and, never wrestled and bro, before, and no bro, grappling. Not a 
blue belt because he's 75. No, a no. Vita Jiu Jitsu. Oh, he's been blue two belt. years yeah, training. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I'm not cutting him any more slack yeah. than anyone. Like, he it's fucking like, earned it. He's been training like, for hey, two years. Motherfucker, you want to be a black belt? You better live to 90, That's bitch. right. That's right. You know? Because we ain't speeding the path up no, for your no. ass at all. Right. Yeah, no. And he always kind of joked about that. I was like, I was like, I was like, you can be a black belt one day. He's like, oh, if I live that long. And you're like, I was like, yeah, fair enough. That's, yeah. All right, fair enough. That's a fair he doesn't, he's, that's not, he's not here. No, he's not here for that. For he that. don't even care about that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, so I'm giving him his blue belt on Wednesday. And uh I was going through, I'm cleaning out a bunch of my shit because I've got a big move coming up. Knock, knock, wink, wink, right? I thought you said we could talk about it. We can. We can okay. we'll talk we about it, right? It's a, this is a segue to a segue. Yeah, a segue, segue to a segue. Anyway, back so, to So, yeah, me. so I'm cleaning a bunch of my shit out, and I find this blue belt in one of my boxes that I'm cleaning out. And so when I started Vita, when I opened up Vita, I was a blue belt. I hired a black belt to, to be the professor over it. But then we got all the belts branded. So it was my first Vita branded blue belt. Because oh. I already had a blue belt, but when I got a Vita branded blue belt, yeah, I put my yeah. two degrees on it. It was my first Vita blue belt, which I only ended up having for about three months because then I got promoted. But I found my first Vita blue belt. And I took the degrees off, and I'm going to promote him with that. Oh, that's cool. That's, that's pretty cool. fucking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of special, bro. You know, like he's a fucking. He, he's an awesome, awesome person. Or do you want to hold on to that for Jackson to get his blue belt? No, because <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, not, I'm not trying to fuck. Sorry, Mike. Guy. Fuck, fuck you, Mike. Sorry. No, um, no. Jacks Jackson will get one of the new blue belts from fucking field uh, craft. Field craft. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bro, I I just had my first kid go to adults like Hayden getting his blue belt because mm -hmm. he turned sixteen. He's been with us for like four years. You know, yeah, and it made me realize, man, like a kid's blue belt, it can, it can mean it's so different. It's different, bro. Because it's you different. got you got like uh, Elijah, the little kid I was pointing at today, who's already like phenomenal at jujitsu, good takedowns, good yeah. guard recovery, good passing, and he's eight. Yeah. So when he turns sixteen, he's already coming up on. 10 years of jujitsu hey, black belt level here's your blue belt here's your blue belt <laughs> well and that's, that's yeah. the thing like i've got 40 year old dudes that are blue belts but like a 16 year old blue belt is especially like, one is like that's a black belt <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's fucking crazy like jackson i mean again i go back to jackson just because like jackson like a couple of the other kids in my academy Jackson has been training for seven years now. He's gonna be twelve. Yeah, seven years he's been training. So yeah, he'll be ten years when he every gets fucking his, day when he gets his blue belt. Bro, you know, he, he starts exactly like Dora. Yeah, my daughter, bro. She's like two belts from the blue belt. She's on the green white. Yeah, yeah. You know, wrestler, love yeah. wrestling, want to be a prodigy and, and shit. You know, and it's 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 beautiful to to see them growing on the mats, right, bro, and and change that that. Uh, Kids belt system to the adult. Yeah, it's so a new phase right. of life, right? I, ha I have yeah. one of the boys at the gym, uh, Andrew Jr. Bro, same thing from white to. Oh, yeah, Bernardo's I know Andrew Jr. Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah. He has purple belt, he has a high level wrestling and everything. You know, he's been training a lot of striking. You know, he want to be like complete, he want to be good. You know, um, yeah, bro. Kids, it, it, and it's beautiful to see the, 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 the passage, right? From, For sure, from, bro. From yeah, kids. You You're know? making them competent, yeah. like yeah. really, truly competent. That's like like a, bro, life a purple lesson, belt, a young age. You know? you know, like for a 17 year old purple belt. Show up, or maybe you know too. What is what is the actual standard on if they're a colored belt in kids and they turn 16? Is it typically yes. so blue, blue is what's belt. next? Yes. Okay, so here's what's the, the, it's not when you turn 16, but the year, the year of yeah, which yeah. you turn 16. Yep. You turn yeah. 16, then you become yeah. juvenile. Right? So even, yeah, yeah. So even if like, say uh, they're, say they're a gray yeah. belt. From 16 yeah. to 18, yeah. then you become adult. adult. That's right. Yeah. Right? So, so even if they're that, a gray belt. Year, uh, window, you're mm -hmm. juvenile. The year of which they turn 16, even at gray belt. So they say they didn't get gray, yellow, orange, green. Even if they're a gray belt, the year of which they turn sixteen, you can give promote them to blue belt. Okay. No, I didn't do can that. Can you go back? Can you go to white? I did that. Okay. I did that. I had one of my students. Oh yeah. 
uh, Liam, yeah, right? Liam. I had one of my students, and I think he was a yellow belt. But he hadn't trained for a while. They came back. They joined our gym as a family. And he was a little bit older, so he was a yellow belt at like 15. Yeah. And I basically said, look, I will keep... I moved him up to adult class because he was fucking our size. Yeah. yeah. I said, I can leave you a yellow belt. You can be a yellow belt in adult class. Or I can just give you a white belt with three or four stripes in adult class. He's like, I'd rather be a white belt in adult class. Fair enough. I gave him a white belt. I made him train for like a whole nother year. Before he got his blue. And then I gave fair him his enough, blue belt. Yeah. Also, because if you don't do that, not that you have to give the blue belt, because you don't have to. No, of course not. But it's like it's like having a 19-year-old or a 20-year-old with a yellow belt. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How the fuck? How old are you? <laughs> are you like, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. blue belt? It's a your fucking your yellow yeah. belt? It's oh, a, yeah, bro. Yeah. I used to just when I was nine. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. How, are, how are you a sophomore yeah. in high school? You have a beard and buy liquor. <laughs> bro, it's like, I, I mean, we were just talking about how the boys haven't been training. And they were gray belts when they were little boys. Mm-hmm. And that's why I told him, I was like, you, you come back as a white belt now. Oh, yeah. For you're, sure. You're, you're 20. fucking adults now. Yeah. You're 20 years yeah. old. Yeah. Back as a white belt, bro. There ain't a no fucking gray belt at no, 20. <laughs> so you could, be, you could be a purple or brown belt right now. Yeah, exactly. What's, uh, so what's the earliest you can promote to purple then? 17. 17. 17. Yeah. And then brown is 18, right? Yeah, you can do one year. You and can then, do one year as so, a juvenile. So if because, and, and that's a thing, bro. You're only eat, because you're juvenile. Yeah, so now you're going to see that one happen with Jackson, bro. Yeah. Because I, I am there, I'm almost there, right? Dara going to turn, she's 14 now, so she gets the green, white, end of the year. Next yeah. year, give her the, the green and black. And the next year, she gets the blue. Right, right. yeah. Bro. We talk about like goes fast then from there, bro. We talk about like eleven years of training. Of course, she, of course. She, she, she's eleven black belt. years. She's a black belt. Yeah. 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 You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Like the green belt is the black belt for yeah, the for sure, hundred percent. And technically, you know, of course, she's not mature enough. But bro, she's still fourteen, right? But yeah. when she turns sixteen, she's a blue belt, and when she's seventeen, she's a purple belt, yeah. right? And that that's when it makes sense that the, the change of belt so fast. And you're going to see, bro, because... Because like, you're black belt. Bro, you're black belt already. black belt at the yeah, green yeah. belt. Yeah. And then the, it's it's even unfair for him to be fighting, you know? Of course. At, at 20, mm-hmm. yeah. like a purple belt. It's like, dude, just like... Right, it's, yeah. It's too much, you know? You're black belt. Yeah. So and then... that's when it makes sense that fast change, yeah. you know? If you're following the Federation rules, 19 is the fastest you should... Be able to get a black belt. Get a black yeah. belt. Yeah, so you can get your blue belt the year of which you yeah. turn 16. So you can be 15 in a blue belt. Um, you only have to spend one year. If you're a juvenile blue belt, you only have to spend one year at blue belt to your purple belt. And you only have to spend one year at purple belt to your brown belt. So I heard they changed the rules for... for Mika Galvao? I don't know exactly. Uh, I don't know if it was just the rumors or see if it's going to be effectively changed, but... Uh, I heard that you're going to have like the minimum time for. for so no more minimum time. You, it's up to you, the professor. Okay. Well, well, because I heard, and I don't know if this is just jujitsu rumors or not, but like, I guess some people were like, Mika Galvao's coach gave it to him at 18. And some people were like, whoa, you can't do that. It's but, a year of which he turns 19. So but, he could have been 18 turning 19, 19 in October. But then he goes out and fucking beats everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, can't, okay. You can't argue with if no, he's a black belt. Yeah. 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 For sure. No, and also, like, you do, you cannot have an adult signing up as a juvenile, but you can have a juvenile signing up mm-hmm. as an adult. Mm-hmm. Right? The, you can go the division the above. Other way. Right? Yeah. 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 So. Bro, I was watching, uh, now that I have flow grappling at the gym, just sometimes geek out on, like, old matches. Yeah. Dude, I didn't know the Mika Galvao beat Leandro Lowe. Probably. He did. I, I, don't, watched I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I watched it, dude. And it was one of those fights where you exactly expect Leandro Lowe trying to pass like fucking frantically like, yeah, the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that kid's guard is literally oh, dude, insane. Like impassable, fucking dude. Insane, bro. And uh, he edged out. Uh, I don't remember if he got an advantage or points or what, but he won. I was like, dude, that doesn't even make sense. Dude, some of them are so good, I don't even understand jujitsu. <laughs> like, I, I really don't. Bro. I mean, I think I may have even told this last podcast, but like when a brow was in, yeah, bro, he beat the fuck out of me without even raising a breath. 
And I'm not going to say that I tapped to pressure. But you but tapped kinda, to pressure. I kind of tapped to pressure. <laughs> Bro, my rib went kunk. <laughs> I was like, fuck, he's going to break a rib if I don't tap. You know, like... It was fucking humbling, bro. Well, and bro, we're the same size. He's not a giant dude. We're the same size. Yeah, it's not fucking Josh it's not Barnett. Fucking Joao, sweaty it's armpit. not fucking Joao in your face. Like <laughs> <laughs> I felt like that one day we uh, Matos Gabriel. Yeah, yeah, bro. Fuck, he's like he was. He 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 went to visit me in uh, electric. We roll, and he was being cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he was being cool. Yeah, and like. Dude, the speed, the 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 the, the precision, yeah, you know, bro, insane. It's, it's the insane. time, everything, it's some, insane, bro. Some guys are some young, shit. I don't even understand. But like, also, Matos Gabriel is like on a peak of his. Oh, of course, not even of the course. Yeah, you know, bro, he's going to yeah, the peak. You know, right. like, how old is he? I don't know, bro. He's like 24, 25. Okay, but he's there. Like, he's the pinnacle. He's, he's on the pinnacle. You know? And let's say he, his peak gonna be at 30, 30 yeah. you know. 35 yeah in between 30 and 35 right? yeah bro, it's not even That's that yet still, yeah, he's got yeah. 10 years it's crazy to think about the level nowadays for the yeah it's wild it's wild i love watching jackson train bro i fucking love it and like i'm working a lot more like sports stuff with them now so like for the last month the last month all we've been doing the entire month has been lasso guard with them and bro, watching these kids like warm up in an advanced class, I'm like, all right, guys, go ahead, set the timer, three minutes, pull for pull, set your lasso, pull for pull, set your lasso. And bro, they're fucking viciously pulling guards, setting their lasso. They've got all the different, everything we did tonight, they got all the different fucking lasso sweeps like crazy. This month's Della Hiva, you know, like working Della Hiva and deep Della Hiva with them, like little kids, bro. And I'm like, fuck, man. They're fucking rolling through into fucking omoplatas and shit. I'm like, uh, he's doing shit that I haven't even taught him. He's like, well, I watched you do it the other night, dad. It's because he's there. I'm like, fuck, you know what I'm saying? Dad. It's like us watching tutorials. I'm like, oh, yeah, I play that game. I can see how you got there. Well, he's doing the same thing because he's been playing that game for fucking seven years. Yeah. You know? It's fucking gnarly, dude. It's fucking rad. Dude, kids class in general and has become like... My favorite aspect of the gym. I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Not little kid class. Regular no, even, kid, even class. Regular kid class, class, man. Fuck. No, it's I love awesome, advanced. Man. I love advanced kid class. I mean, you saw all our kids in here. Like, dude, they're no like. It's just literally like running another adult class, except you get to. See, I, I feel like you get to see it impact them a little greater. No, for sure. I, I, I don't have any say, drama like, with. Like, I shouldn't say no drama. I got like. Some kids want to fucking pick their nose. Of course, bullshit, every once in a while. Know. But like, uh, we, and we, I we both this, found like, pieces of poo poo on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I will say this: like from a father's aspect, like standpoint, um, I, I I do enjoy impacting these young boys, like in a positive way. Like I've got a bunch of boys that don't have a dad at home. Yeah, bro. And I've seen their personality change over. And six dude, seven months you know that's because the wh what we are going to see not not to go on this fucking crazy rabbit hole but we've been burning some joints Fuck yeah, let's what, go. what we are going let's to go see crazy. in our society because of testosterone supposed to be gone covid resurgence sperm count supposed to be gone by 2045 like men are getting weaker and weaker more compliant everybody does what they're told the fucking world is going to implode if we don't have fucking men. And we are going to be the fucking warlords. And if we're the last generation of men, well, guess who's fucked? Our kids, dude. So when I see the young men in here show up being fucking cowards and timid, and I mean, I don't know if I should assign the term coward to an eight-year-old. <laughs> but but the, no, it's applicable. And then in six months, nah, bro, they, they're, they're no, hey, they're not afraid anymore. Like you're not, you're not a coward. You know I mean? Lily, Lily just told us someone pulled into the <laughs> gravel know, parking lot. You're crazy and doing things and getting challenged. Yeah, and, dude. You know? and this and that. But yeah. like, dude, if fucking, if we can be the catalyst to make our community Plot. fucking stronger, man, that's fucking powerful. And you see it at the academy all the fucking time, dude. Oh, I love it. Like fucking like kids that just. Plot fucking want to cry and complain and the other thing is the bigger the gym gets the like the kids have now bought off on the culture too 
So like when other kids show up and they're weak, uh, dude, they yeah. don't like that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it kind of forces. Oh, bro, my kids don't like training with the kids in the class that are fucking pussies. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, bro. You know, like, uh, is what it is. Like, my kids know, like, hey, if you got, like, a fucking limb hanging like this, you're fucking bleeding or some shit, and you want to cry, cool. I'll cry, like, I'll fucking hold you. I'll make sure I get you a fucking... To the doctor or to the ER or whatever. But like if you're crying because you're fucking uncomfortable or you're a little banged up or you're a little hurt, like there's a I and I explained there's a difference between hurt and injured. Are you injured or are you hurt? Bro, I tell them if then you fucking if, suck it up. Hey, if, if you need to cry, you can cry, but you better keep fighting. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you don't get to tap out because you're crying. I told my own little eight year old little girl that the other night. Because she was fucking sparring with a boy who was like a year or two older than her, a little bit bigger than her, but been training less than her. And I see her, she's fucking fighting for a takedown, fighting for a takedown. My little girl loves Osotogari. She fucking takes everyone down with Osotogari. And she starts crying. I was like, you I like better not, I was like, you better not fucking stop. I didn't say fucking because it was, a, but I was like, you better not stop. My shoulder. I said, your shoulder hurts because you're being lazy. <laughs> finish it right now. I was like, finish it right now. Take him down. And then she wham and fucking slammed him down the ground, fucking mounted him, fucking submitted him, you know? And then she's crying to me. I was like, stop crying. I was like, you're crying because you were being lazy and lackadaisical, and that's what hurt your shoulder. Yeah. Fight for real. If you're going to be out here, fight for real. But I tell the kids all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same with my daughter, bro. Bro, and, yeah, and dude. I'm glad you do too because uh, <laughs> you know, like, dude. If, if you're, it's only me. <laughs> hey, if your shoulder gets hurt in a dark alley when some dude grabs well, that's you, that's my whole thing. What are you gonna do? That's my whole thing. So as I said, un unless it's a catastrophic injury where I need to pull you off the mats, right? An unforeseen injury no, is a training you opportunity go, for sure, hundred percent. You collide heads on. Uh, you're trying to shoot in and, and fucking you, send it, and you bloody go. your lip. Go, go, go! Fight you better go. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And that's the thing, like. You think the boy in the fucking dorm room is gonna stop? That's what I'm saying. Because you fucking hurt yeah, when he's trying to yeah, fucking rape like, you. Yeah. Like you're gonna. No, you better fucking fight with everything in your fucking because life. You're rubbing your face on asphalt, bro. Somebody's on top of you rubbing your face on asphalt. You're gonna yeah. stop fighting. Yeah, no, dude. fuck no, dude. <laughs> like uh, I don't play that shit. Like you, but you're gonna fucking choke his arm or choke his fucking life out of his fucking neck and rip his fucking arm off. <laughs> Choke his arm. And choke his arm. I'm getting fucking fired up. Hey, <laughs> choke his arm. Uh, getting, uh, getting uh, <laughs> hey, we're not going to uh, forget that one for a while. Uh, yeah. But, bro, like, I went to, or my daughter went down to Arizona last week and spent time with her grandmother, who is 70. And she went to the mall with her grandma and a couple of her friends. So she was there with, like, a group of 70 year old ladies, right? Uh. And Sai is like, hey, I'm going to run over to this store and look at this or that. Like, whatever, you know? Yeah. And she's like, she said, two of the old ladies are like, you can't go there alone. You could get abducted. <laughs> and she's like, she goes, what? Uh -huh. She's like, oh, this stuff happens a lot more than you think. And Sai goes, I fucking, I, I dare someone to try and abduct me. <laughs> and then all the old ladies were just like, what? <laughs> you know, like they couldn't yeah. comprehend it. Yeah. And then she got home and she told me, she goes, I kind of hope someone tries to abduct me someday. <laughs> and I was like, that's my fucking that's my girl. girl. That's my, yeah. and, and think about that. To have the mentality at 14 years old of it, let's go, go bring ahead it, bring and it, try. Try, try to abduct me. The truth is she's 14. Yeah. Full grown men, she's not there yet. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a I'm a realist. Yeah, for sure. But mentally she is, and that's half the battle, dude. And look, they they're preying on the weak. Of course. So when of she course, fucking bro. fires back and they're like, Holy fuck, yeah, what was exactly. this? Yeah. Little yeah. fucking it's like my, my Tasmanian daughter, my daughter devil. Has, my daughter has the same mindset, bro, because when they ask us like, Dory, what if you have to, to fight? What what what's your yeah, plan? One two. And she's like Double jab straight. Like, and if it doesn't work, then I take that. Like, <laughs> Bro, so when when your daughter was in town last month, her and Siler and then Cadence, Will's daughter, who's a fucking very very I watched good her grappler. today. I was yeah. watching her roll today. She's fucking savage. She's a savage, bro. Yeah, uh, dude, they're walking around the mall, and they're like, so many boys are trying to get our number, and we were just like basically telling them to fuck off right yeah. and all all three of the girls were like yeah because you know like 
if they whatever. if they want to be stupid, we'll we'll fucking kill them. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and they would, and they would, they would. They would. No, I mean, no, they bro, would. that's a weird no. thing. I think about like, I think about me. They would show up on the news, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, I think about me at in eighth grade, fourteen years old, riding around on my skateboard. I didn't think it would be humanly possible for, for a, a woman to beat you up to be able to kill me, but eighth grade Greg against Dora, I'm. Dead. Yeah. Dead. <laughs> yeah. I would be too, bro. Je- Gemma. Yeah. <laughs> I, I make He's sure dead. I pair Gemma up with all the boys that are roughly her age. Yeah. Maybe a little older, bro. She takes every one of them down, mounts them, cross collar chokes, or arm bars them. Every fucking one of them. And bro, just at eight years old, and, and just used like to physical, yeah, exactly. right. used to physical confrontation right, for sure with boys. For, but bro, I tell yeah, you, yeah. I tell you, like you know who I used to 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 to, to give an example for Dar, it's uh, Mackenzie Dern. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. her mom, uh, my ex-wife, she's very good friends with Mackenzie. You know, and bro, and of course the uh, Megaton is always around. Of course, yeah, and it's not different than. What we are you, for our yeah, kids, yeah, for right? Sure. For our daughters, of course, right? Yeah. So, bro, I always tell us like, babe, look, look, Mackenzie, bro. You know, she doesn't remember life without jujitsu. Where she, look where she is now, like we have seen everything. You know what I mean? And uh, and that's cool too. You know, it's like a, a real example of something that starts exactly the way where uh, she was who they are right now, right? And bro, she got to the top of the the, the fighting game. You know, she's it's like awesome. champion of. She's basically the bushesh of the... For sure. Uh, the women's... Yeah, yeah. Remember where sure. she beat Gabby? Yeah, bro. Everyone's like, what the fuck, yeah, dude? Yeah. Because what's Mackenzie? 115? Isn't that what she fights at? I'm not sure. I think she's tiny. But regardless, Mackenzie's like this really beautiful, cute, pretty little feminine chick, and Gabby is not. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would make a child with Gabby. You guys can judge me <laughs> just, however you want. Just to, to, to make a new lineage. <laughs> just to make a new fucking... <laughs> a new blood <laughs> type. A new, yeah, a new blood <laughs> type. That's what it would be, bro. <laughs> it would be a new species, bro. New species. Bro, like... <laughs> hey, it would be a new species. I have no... X, I have X no plus. fucking ego. She would be getting the, the savage genetics from her mom or his mom. And it's like, roger that, dude. <laughs> fucking traps... Past his ears and shit, dude. Legend. <laughs> Legendary. <laughs> and if anyone thought thinks that's strange, like, fuck it. Whatever. I mean, you whole, don't understand whole, about the whole. genetics. And, she might be, <laughs> and then she might be the best. You know, hey, about genetics. And then she might true. be the best fuck your entire life, dude. You never know. <laughs> bro, fuck him. She might have the tightest pussy ever fucked. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I need to light this joint back up. <laughs> There's a theory to that, you know. Skinny chicks, huge pussy. Fucking big fat chicks, fucking tight pussies. Yeah, you know? yeah that's true. I can tell Science. Yeah. <laughs> Science. So a girl, you're saying, so when a girl goes on a diet, her pussy gets bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not buying it, dude. I think that's a fucking wives' tale that fat chicks started spreading. To fucking to get laid, yeah, exactly. <laughs> As an advertisement to increase their odds. <laughs> no, bro, All that's the excuse hair. for the guys who just fuck fat chicks. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, no, bro, yeah. their pussies are better. <laughs> All those super <laughs> tighter, super athletic, fucking beautiful women. You don't want them because their pussies aren't any good. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Yeah, they're terrible, dude. <laughs> Trust me, you want these gross, gothic fat bitches, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh so where are we at i took notes we talked about something oh the resurgence of covid bro let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about like let's talk about the <laughs> resurgence of covid because when chris listened to the podcast we did last time he goes dude we didn't go as hard as i felt like we did so we can go fucking hard now let's do it. all right and i don't and here's the thing too because like obviously i'm more conservative minded so the shit that i consume the people that i follow are more the type of people that are on the right and part of me is wondering if they're just fucking like panicking about this because a college reinstituted the mass mandate right right now is this an indication that they're gonna slowly try and turn up the heat 
nationwide. That's what a lot of people think. Like a college went back to it. I know. I think they said like some businesses and like, I've seen no less than four posts about it now. I think lion's gate, lion's gate. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. some companies are doing it. Right. And, uh, I think that, I think they're probably going to try and push an agenda. If I had to be a betting man, right? Would you tell me about the, the fucking, uh, boosters or uh, vaccines the, or some no, bullshit? Yeah. yeah, that, there's, uh, yeah um, so you can go to, um, Andy for last podcast. Cause he linked it in his show notes and they have basically like receipts, like government documents that are, that are, obtained through probably freedom of information or whatever. Right. Talking about how massive amounts of money have been spent towards a resurgence of COVID for this fall. And it's like, so they're buying PCR tests. Yeah. They're buying PCR tests and like talking to like moving forward against this new Omicron variant and just a bunch of shit. That's just stirring the fucking pot because we all know your PCR tests, your vaccines, all your shit was bullshit. Your no, masks. No, 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 I disagree. I think, I think this time, this time, the masks will work. I promise. We were just believe us, trust us, but this time the masks Let's will do work. The same thing. I think yeah. We're gonna do the gonna same work. thing. Same cloth <laughs> mask, like, but it's gonna work this time. Cares, and so, like, there's a part of me that, like, I don't want to get all spun up on it because is it happening yet? I don't think so. But apparently, but, some places it is. But, but imagine if you're at that college, oh yeah, or work for that business, or, or, or bro, says, hey, now you have to wear masks. Think again. about, think about uh, if I fuck like you. Think about if I like paid the fucking fall tuition for my fucking child, right? And now right. you're now like, you hit me with this. Well, now, now and I can't well, get my money back, and we're not going there now, right? right? So this is where I'm at on it. I was talking to Jenny last night. I'm like, I, I'm not trying to be the one that's causing riffs in the family and the friends i will not put one on under any condition period no, if that means, that means i don't get to fly anymore right, exactly. then that means i don't get to fly anymore right, right, right. if that means i don't get to go into the grocery store then i'll fucking starve to death but i'm but we won't starve to death because we can yeah, i'll go, I'll like, go like, before i starve to death i'll go back in that same grocery store and i'll fucking take I'll everything, take everything. You, right, right, right. you know yeah. but dude like if any of you motherfuckers out there that no, it's bullshit. Like, here's the thing. If you're one of the kids on the left whose hair is blue and you've been literally brainwashed and you think all this is real, fuck you off with your head. But, at least, you can, but at least you can understand why they're following is because they're just brainwashed lemmings, right? Right, right, right. The ones that are worse than those dumb kids. If you know it's bullshit, yeah. but you, you put one on anyway. Yep. Because I don't want to. And on I, their, don't wanna, I don't want to get along. And on their Instagram hat. You, the, on the Instagram, they're saying, do not comply. Right, right. And then they're going to do whatever the Mo fuck they're told. Mobile lobby tattoos yeah. and fucking stickers and shit. And so it's like, last time, and, and dude, you know, everybody says, oh, I, I, I resisted. Have you seen that? Have you noticed that? I've been looking at these threads as they're popping back up this week. No, I haven't seen and that. it's like, yeah, haven't. everybody in the comment section is like, I defied all the orders. I defied this. I never put a mask on. And it's like, motherfucker, most of us did because we got so backed into a corner, you know, like I literally told the whole world to fuck off. Like when I knew it was time to stand up, I fucking stood up. But before that, like, Hey, to be in this, to be in this store, to get groceries, we have to have a mask on. It's like, this seems stupid, but I need to get groceries Look, for two weeks. That's what I'm for, saying. For like, two weeks, I did the, the same thing. Out of because the gates. Yeah. Out of the gates is like, oh, maybe this is like a real thing. Maybe this is legit. Okay. Let's do our part. Right. And then I was like, wait, what is it? What fucking Bro, antibodies? I knew, what, what, what? I knew our government was fucked up, but I didn't think they were evil that fucked and up. corrupt. Like, Deli- they like, like, like fucking yeah. deliberately fucked up. Like. And so now that I know, I don't. I'm not playing no, your game uh, anymore. Yeah. Same here. And I, I think see, yeah. I, get, I think everybody should get a grace into opening their eyes to this because it was a weird process, bro. And I think it, a lot of people it took them longer than others. But if you're not fully fucking retarded by now, you can look at the situation and understand it was a fucking scam. Your government does not give a fuck about you. Not only do they not give a fuck about you, they actively hate you yeah pretty much and, and you are just a source of revenue that's it that's oh, what you 100%, are 100 percent. 100 percent. and fuck man like people are still gonna do what they say 
knowing. Well, that that's because knowing that they're the bad guys. But that's because those people are incapable of doing anything else. Yeah. Those people are incapable of fucking violence. Those people are unwilling to commit violence. And, and there, there, there's a difference. And bro, I told you earlier, I got an email today from a guy that listens to the show. He's a fan of the yeah, show. I'm worried about you, bro. I'm really worried <laughs> no, about you. He's like, you. bro, he said, and he probably is worried about me because of some of the shit that I say because he thinks I'm going to get in trouble with the government. But here's the, here's the other side of that coin. If you're not willing to say what you feel because you're worried about the government, that means it's time to say yeah, what your concerns are about yeah, the government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now we're in a place like I, I'm worried about them. Fuck you, dude. Yeah. And why would you ever be worried about this group of old cowardly fucks, man? And if I'm involved, I'm pretty sure I'd get a call from the fucking senior team leader at blue team or gold team before they came in. For this office. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but, but, but here's the weird thing. Any man that has the potential to win against men like us in the realms of combat, meaning like fucking HRT guys, SWAT yeah, guys, like yeah. whoever they were to end up pitting against us because I'm not taking your COVID shot. They're the men that are cut out of the the cloth that we're cut out of. Yeah. Right. But do you think that's going to be good enough for them to fucking say, fuck the government? I mean, look, I, and, and again, you know, obviously I come from a fairly, um, fairly capable, fairly large SWAT team. And I work pretty heavily with the guys at HRT. And uh, those guys are us. That's what I'm saying. Like legitimately they're fucking us. Like, those guys are deploying when some shithead is holding an innocent person hostage. Yeah. And the local SWAT team doesn't have the capability to deal with it. They're not fucking, they're not fucking coming after fucking Greg Anderson because he's talking bad about the government. <laughs> you know, like they don't give a fuck. They agree with you, bro. They're not getting That's fucking mobilized for that That's shit. That's what I'm saying, dude. dude. You know, like if and, anything, like and bro, it's got a local oh, police department, like, oh, Greg Anderson's a quack and he's making fucking dangerous statements. Oh, so we're going to go investigate him. All capable men, all the toughest men in society feel the same way about all these cocksuckers. Yeah. All of them do. And for some reason, the toughest men in society still allow these the fucking weakest fucking weak men. scoundrels to take scoundrels. to take half of our fucking money yeah. and launder it back to themselves and fly around in private jets while they tell you what to fucking do. Yeah. And it's nuts, dude. I'm ready to stop paying taxes completely. Bro, we should. Everybody should. Everybody should. Like that's something that we should that should be a real movement. Because yeah. if you stop paying taxes in ones and twos, they'll fucking dude, they will they'll descend come, oh, on they'll you. They'll come after you. Yeah, they'll come after you. They'll fucking realize. But if everybody stops paying taxes, what are they gonna do? Bro, when you're paying and and do the math, well over fifty percent of your oh, bro, income. Bro, it's fucking ridiculous, well, bro. It's ridiculous. When you look at property tax. Sales tax. It's criminal. Fucking income tax. All these different taxes, dude. Yeah. Uh, I bitched about it on the show before. To give my boy, my forerunner, what? they wanted to tax him because he's not technically blood. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are you talking? Yeah. Yeah. Another man is telling me I can't give my boy a forerunner. Yeah. That should be a death sentence. It's, dude. Well, it's fucking that should criminal. be a it's, fucking it's, it's criminal. death sentence. Yeah. It's legitimately And criminal. we all just accept it as normal, dude. Yeah. You know? Oh, well, these are the rules. We got to fucking follow the rules. Blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. And so, bro, yes. If the fucking lockdowns are coming back and this ends up being them just very initially testing the waters to see what happens, I'm going to be so defiant that there's a good chance it'll be the end of Greg Anderson. Well, same, <laughs> I'm, I'm with I don't you, homie. give a fuck fuck about any other rules yeah, anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, homie. I'm, you I'm try and shut my gym yeah. down, you're dead. Yeah, fuck you. You try and take me into custody because yeah. I don't have a mask on in a store, you're dead. Like, well, it's, it I has mean, to be how that's it the is, way dude. I felt the way in the beginning, the first time. Or if you're nice to me, I'll be your best friend. Yeah. yeah that's the alternative. Just treat someone with respect and everything's cool. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. But no, like. I mean, you and I have talked about it. We're on the same page. <laughs> and that's the way I felt the first time, but even more so this time. Like, like all of a sudden now wait, oh wait, ma now mask works. No, no, now masks work for for real. Like, 
<clears throat> they work. Like you should wear mask. You need to wear masks because this time they worked. The last time they didn't work so much. This so, time they do. So you think like, there's still gonna be off. those people standing at the front of the stores that are like, "Hey, you gotta have a mask on to be in oh, here." Oh, one hundred fucking percent, dude. Like, one hundred. Not even a fucking shadow of a doubt. Not because, even a shadow of a doubt. That's fucking nuts, dude. Bro, people are more concerned with keeping their fucking safety little livelihood than actually standing up for what they believe. 100%. 100 percent. One hundred fucking percent. Worse than just like not having the balls to stand up for what you believe, you're just gonna openly accept that you're somebody else's slave. One hundred percent. This person tells me to do this, so I do. One hundred percent. So I do. One hundred percent, bro. <laughs> bro, that's how that one hundred fucking percent. One hundred percent. Not even a shadow of a doubt. It's insanity, dude. And you know what? I kind I I told you this earlier. I told you guys this. I hope it comes. I hope the strictest I, I, lockdowns I hope it comes. ever want, come. Because guess who's not going to comply to fucking anything and can yeah. continue to live his life? Yeah, dude. This motherfucker right here. <laughs> dude. And if you stand in my fucking way, I'm going to fucking kill you. Can you imagine? Like, they they literally, in California, there was jujitsu academies that got raided. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, raid my academy, that, see what happens. That happened. Yeah. Like raid, raid, raid my academy. See what happens. That's a that's a fucking thing that our yeah. government has done to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're here training jujitsu. Yeah. You're gonna get schwacked with a bunch of fucking five five <laughs> fifty six from a fucking suppressed M four. Hey, we got you. You're yeah. training, and we told you you yeah. couldn't. And you we got gotcha. you, sneaky yeah. little suckers. Yeah. <laughs> How many bodies do you want to stack I, outside the door of my jujitsu academy? Dare you train jujitsu? <laughs> 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 they jump out of a bush. Yeah. For real, uh, and that's why it's I'm like this gotcha. fucking uh, the Chris Hansen shit. You seen oh, that? Yeah. You seen the episodes where they <laughs> got dudes in, catch a predator. in ghillie suits? <laughs> no, well, dude, I haven't seen him there's in there's suits. episodes to catch a predator where the the, the officers that apprehend him outside yeah. are like perched up next to rhododendrons in like a full <laughs> ghillie suit, and I'm like, dude, people are watching that thinking that's badass. Those fucking guys are just like, let's just do some silly shit tonight, yeah, let's dude. Do some dumb shit. Let's do <laughs> crazy for TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, st- I'm gonna sit here next to the bush. Hey, because you could also just stand there as a uniformed officer when he steps out. Be like, right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. You don't need that last, the, the last two seconds where you're Ha-ha, closing I got the you, motherfucker. Boom! My, you thought it was a bush. It was a cop. Now you're under arrest. Dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> Gotcha. You could literally be dressed up as the fucking janitor. And bro, dude, those guys' stories is the same every single time. Like, oh, well, uh, I did. I didn't know she was thirteen. Well, really, here on your guys' text message <laughs> yeah. thread that we have printed up, she said, "I'm underage. Is that something that's okay with you?" And you said, "Yes, that's no big deal to me." <laughs> you know, I was like, every single one of them is just, just "I'm gonna fucking lie, then I'm gonna get caught." Then I'm going to just shut the fuck up and look like the stupidest, most embarrassed piece of shit on planet Earth. They shouldn't even get arrested, dude. Just take them out and hold them over the fucking storm drain and slit their throat. I'm going to bleed to death. (laughs) Dude, we let those people fucking back out. Yeah, for sure. 100%. (laughs) The justice system, brother. Bro, bro, they're trying to fuck nine-year-olds. Hey, go back out and do great things, dude. Promise you won't do it. You're reformed. You're reformed. Like, bro, yeah, I went from wanting to fuck (laughs) nine-year-olds, and now I'm only sexually attracted to women older than 27 years old, dude. Like, they're broken. But, bro, off with their head, They're, like, trying to normalize that shit. Oh, bro, yeah, minor attracting persons. Yeah, they're trying to normalize that shit, bro. Of course they're trying to normalize it. Bro, if you're a grown man... And you make an advance to my daughter. <laughs> I'm not only going to kill you. I'm literally going to torture you to death. Like, I'm serious. I'm going to fucking torture you to death. I'm going to make your death so fucking slow and miserable. You're fucking going to wish you were never fucking alive. You fucking make an advance to my daughter. My fucking eight, nine, almost nine year old daughter as a grown man. I'm going to fucking. <laughs> Bro, here's this. Mentally. Mental. <laughs> Bro. So, so statistically we got a lot of girls amongst this table we all have girls yeah, That's what I'm saying. As, as fathers yeah. though we have a collective of fucking what seven girls or whatever one three so four fucking five and and six we got six girls so here. fucking like some bullshit's gonna happen at some point 
<laughs> we're gonna have to rally. Dude. Yeah, yeah, for for fuck sure. <laughs> you know what I'm for saying? Sure. Yeah. Fuck. For fucking sure, bro. <laughs> yeah. Well, do do the statistics. That's what, what I'm saying. Is it one in eight? One, one in three. One in oh really? Yeah. Oh, shit. We got six girls here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's double. Twice. You know. Eight no. girl, eight, 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 nine girls. If you really want to talk about it, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> it's fucking. Uh, but it was it was Joao. You told me that the statistic that one in three women is sexually assaulted before her twenty first birthday, yeah. and it's like, and you got three girls. Do the math. Yeah, yeah bro, that's, that's crazy. Bro. Yeah, yeah. The fucking world is we we. The world isn't dark. We've allowed it to be. Well, we've dark. allowed it be, because yeah. of fucking all this political correctness bullshit. Again, fucking broadswords. Bring back the broadsword. Like, bro, like. Let me fucking hack motherfuckers' heads off and, and not have to fucking fight a SWAT team. What society would ever put men that target babies and children back out into the. Back out under the streets? Hey. You did this really fucked up stuff to our children, which should be the most cherished fucking part of a society. It's our duty to fucking give them everything. So all the shit that we do gets to continue. But even more so than that, dudes like us here at this table are more fucking chastised and prosecuted than fucking these fucking little motherfuckers. That, that touch kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Because they're not. We're the extremists. <laughs> dude, we are extreme. You're vain. We're anti government. Bro, they took Mike's money. Bro. Hey, hey, they, they fucked hey, Mike over. Your money's my money now. Yeah. Because I didn't yeah, like. fucked Mike Because I didn't like what you said. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fucking what? bullshit, bro. It is bullshit. fucking insane, dude. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so on to Mike. Yeah, let's talk about Mike. <laughs> we like talking about Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Mike, in case, for those of y'all that don't, the Abla, Mike of Mike Glover of Fieldcraft Survival. Um, I am now the newest full-time employee of Fieldcraft Survival, and I am uh, heading up the Fieldcraft Survival Jiu-Jitsu program, uh, along with Greg Anderson. Um, I'm moving out to Provo to start up the Fieldcraft Jiu-Jitsu Academy. At their headquarters there. Greg, you're coming out on the 15th, I believe, to do the grand opening and a seminar on the 16th. That's the plan. That was an email that hasn't been corroborated. Roger, yet. That, that's the plan. Let, just keep moving forward with that. Okay. We're going to make that happen. We're going to force that. Um, and then we're scaling that to potentially open up. what What's on the books is we're planning to open up a location in Denver and a location in Phoenix, Scottsdale area. Uh, 2024 and then keep expanding throughout the country so in the in like kind of the background of this is M mike's company fieldcraft the whole thing is preparedness being being prepared being capable being capable being able to have options when other people don't and again you know mike mike obviously mike comes from the special operations community um like several of us do in one form or another. And, uh, but Mike is really centering this around families, yeah. around civilians, around the normal everyday, the, the cook baker, the candlestick maker. And that doesn't mean you can't be fucking capable. Yeah. And, and he's told you, you know, he said this uh, on, on, on many of his social media platforms. He's told you this, my, myself, this, that, the root of it, the foundation of this being capable is one physical fitness and, and, and physical combativeness. Yes. Which is jujitsu. Let's, jiu -jitsu, let's just be honest. It's jujitsu. So, um, no, obviously, he, yeah, no, he talked to me about that last time he was up here yeah, and he's yeah. like, cause his, I mean, I'm, his, his wheels have been turning, having a, a, a presence in jujitsu with Fieldcraft for a while. Right. But I also think like spending time with both of us obviously kind of exasperated that because he, sure. he said to me last time he was here, he's like, dude, it just has to be the foundation of what we do. We yeah. have to start pushing this yeah. as, as part of what we do because like for all the reasons that all of us at this table know why it's so important, it's the foundation of being a fucking capable human being. Oh, for sure. For you sure. know? And I'll say this, dude. So the last time you were now... I were out at Mike's house. Bro, he's lost like 40 pounds. 
But he fucking looks good, dude. Yeah? He's fucking, like, locked in, bro. He was, like, 260-something when we were out there. He's, like, 220-something now. Mike's he's a big fucking, motherfucker, man. He's a big motherfucker, but now he looks, like, fucking fit and jacked and, like... Good, man. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. But, like, yeah, dude, like, you want to be capable? Like, you can't just learn how to apply a tourniquet and do some medical shit. You can't just be on a square range and learn how to shoot. Like, you've got to be able to fucking run. And lift and do push ups and burpees and drag a person. Like, you've got to be physically fit. Physical fitness is probably, in my opinion, physical fitness is the first layer of the foundation. Bro, there's no. Of being competent. That's not even up com- for debate. Combatively. That's not even up for debate. Not even. It's the original fucking issued piece of equipment. 100%. It's your body. It's your body and you a PT it? test. A fucking PT test. You know? Are you physically fit enough to be here? And that's for regular army. That's for special operations in any branch of service. Like, you've got your PT test to get into that military branch. And then you've got another extended PT test to get into that MOS or that 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 unit, that selection process. Same thing for law enforcement. You got a PT test to get hired. You got a PT test if you want to apply for SWAT or anything like that. Like, you've got to be physically fit at a much higher level, period. And you know, you always hear people talk about like mental toughness or physical toughness. Like, bro, you hone your mental toughness through through physical shit. That's right. You, You don't just gain it, you fucking build it. And how do you build it? You build it through pain and suffering. Grind. Yeah, the grind. Or, hey, or, hey are you going to do Naked and Afraid with me now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fucking miserable. I like my life, bro. <laughs> do you know who EJ Snyder is? You heard that name? No. He's a guy that's done the challenge like 10 times. Okay. And uh, he's like a retired been, military guy. He's been Naked and Afraid 10 times? Yeah, bro. Oh, all right. Because like the guys that are good at it, they're like, oh, you did 20 days, 21 days here. Try 60 in Africa. <laughs> you know, like they, yeah. they put some crazy ones together. Uh, and so he's went out and done some of those crazy ones. But anyways, he got a no one's coming to save you shirt. And then we were talking. He's like, dude, I'd be down to do your podcast at some point. So once I'm in, bro, <laughs> fucking A, send me out <laughs> in the fucking jungle to get eaten by ants. <laughs> oh, that that yeah, you know what? Yeah. I have zero interest in any of that. <laughs> you know what I was telling Jenny the other day? I was like, for most people, if you're getting eaten by ants and you quit, you, that's the end of it. No one ever cares, you know? But if you're someone that's fucking has a fucking business and a brand and a gym. Into the world. Where I yeah. preach like a, a fucking no quit mentality. Yeah, you better not. And then I got cold and I had, I just can't do this night. You're going to have to I'd die. die out you're gonna, there. You, you I have to die. You're going to literally you know, have to you know, what, you know what is my version of Naked and Afraid? <laughs> <laughs> Staying in this office on a fucking tempur mattress on the floor. Next to Chris Schiff. <laughs> with the bidet right next with door. The bidet yeah. right Dude, I did, next door. I did the Joao special with the bidet today. <laughs> What'd you do? Tell me. You don't know the Joao special? No, no, no. He's like, bro, you, know, listen now. bro you spray your ass down, and then, then you give the dick a quick rinse. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, hey, let's try the dick hour, bro. <laughs> <laughs> No cheese, no shit. No ricotta anymore. Roger that, hey, roger that. <laughs> you work on both sides. Yeah, bro. I barely want to stay on a fucking tempur mattress on the floor in, in your academy. I'm not doing naked and afraid. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about being naked. I'll be naked fucking anywhere. I don't give a fuck about that. But it's, I don't want to live out be in the afraid. fucking jungle afraid. period. <laughs> I don't want to be out in the fucking jungle period. I don't, I don't bro. I don't either. I want to fucking... Fuck pussy and do jujitsu. Fuck yeah. That's what I want to do, yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. But if there's an opportunity to go do something really fucked up, there's a part of me that's like, you should probably oh, why go. Not? You should <laughs> why probably not? go do it's that. Not gonna, it's not going to last forever. And then there's also part You're of me saying, You're going <laughs> to die. It's okay. Bro, it's like. You'll we'll have to die. <laughs> we've done a lot of crazy shit in our lives. Yeah. I don't think I want. I, can, I don't want the crazy shit to be over. No, no, for sure not. But there's no, another crazy no. shit we can do. I'm good with the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy pussy. I just want to have crazy pussy. Uh, crazy pussy. <laughs> the rest is okay. 
Yeah, fuck, dude. <laughs> Fieldcraft Jiu Jitsu's newest professor. Fieldcraft Jiu Jitsu. Ass eating instructional <laughs> optional. <laughs> I'll give you all the tips on eating pussy now. Just to see it. Just to see if it. Yeah, whatever you want. Uh, whatever tips you want on eating pussy and ass. <laughs> Marty, I found a motorcycle Here I'm going to buy. Go. I found a motorcycle I'm going to buy. So Mike will have a riding partner. Yeah, dude. And they're, we're doing a moto mobility course in October. Uh, so fucking off-road mobility course on motorcycles in October. What if you become Mike's bestie and me and Joe, I'll lose you? Well, I'm already losing him, so don't... Uh, don't just join don't the look, deck. Just join the team. <laughs> don't look for any sympathy. <laughs> <laughs> it's already happening. I'll tell Mike. I'll be like, don't remember... Don't forget where you found that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? I mean, we're, we're already talking. I mean, fucking, we're going to be motorcycle riding buddies. We're going to be off-roading buddies. <laughs> you know, like, fucking, we're already talking about CQB shoot house tactics, uh, TTPs and shit. He's like, he's it. like, dude, we're going to have, we're going to have lockers. Each of us are going to have lockers in the back room. I'm buying 30 ones for all of us. We're going to fucking do night vision CQB <laughs> runs and shit. I'm like, Roger that, dude. Let's fucking send it. Fuck, so. dude. Can we move to Utah? <laughs> fucking come on, bring it, bro. Dude, it's rad. It's rad. So, like, fucking no joke. Like, this, I think this is going to reinvent me because, so this guy, Devin, who's fucking rad. Um, One of the I, young kids, younger yeah. kids you were fucking working out with the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, young dude, um, 30 years old, fucking Ranger Bat, former Ranger Bat kid. Okay. Uh, went to college, got a degree in, like, fucking exercise science, kinesiology, fucking smart dude. Went back. And that's what my degree's in too. So thank you for the compliment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fucking wicked smart. <laughs> um, and was on the sister program of the program I was on. So I was on Scorpion Mobile stuff. And he was on Cobra Static side for the same same client. Um, but squared away, dude. Fucking super squared away. Good tactic. Good shooter. Like open minded. But bro, we worked out the morning of, and then trained CQB all day. Yeah, you know, like. This this dude he was he want he's dying to start training jujitsu with me and stuff so like we're gonna be fucking working out and training jujitsu and doing CQB and shooting fucking yeah. just about every day you know like it's gonna be fucking rad dude <sighs> we're gonna fucking it's gonna be fucking Greg two point is coming oh forty five years old reinventing myself fucking again what is what are you looking at your notes. Oh, fucking Johnny Martinez must be outside. Oh, he's here, dude. Johnny, are you out here? He goes, you here? Did Greg tell you if there's a fucking key for the boat? <laughs> uh, I didn't I didn't open the boat because we're still here. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're still here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap this up. Fucking Roger that. We're two hours already. Uh, I'm sorry, Christopher Shifter, that... We didn't get aggressive and, and go hard in the paint. That's okay. We'll have to save that one for Guns and Geese fucking uh, 10. 10. 10 in Louisiana. 10 in Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. November, November 3rd through the 5th. Fuck yeah, dude. Sign up on the website. Seats are available. Registration link will be in the show notes below. <laughs> there you go.